new coach. Tom Coughlin, who a year ago was coaching the wide receivers for Bill Parcells and the New York Giants. In fact, on the day that the Giants won the Super Bowl down in Tampa, Tom Coughlin was on the phone talking to a recruit as soon as that game ended. Across the sideline in his second year as the head man at Michigan is Gary Moeller. 20 years he's been on the staff at Michigan, 18 as an assistant under Bo Schimbeckler, and now he starts his second year as the top man. He took Michigan to a Gator Bowl triumph last year over Mississippi. He was beaten by four points by Notre Dame, lost two tough one-pointers to Michigan State and Iowa. Those two games cost him a chance to go to the Rose Bowl. So Boston College will receive to start the game, and Michigan will go on defense. Dick, what will BC try to do against the Michigan defense here? Well, Steve Sabo, the defensive coordinator, said, Brent, that they're going to mix the fronts up. They're going to show them a front, and then right prior to the snap, they're going to shift to a different look. They don't want to be sitting ducks. They're going to continually disguise their fronts by moving them around. That's the number one thing they want to do. We'll have a sellout crowd here today. Excess of 30,000. Wonderful little intimate on-campus stadium. In the past, Boston College has taken some of its big games on out to Foxborough, but this one they wanted on campus with the Wolverines coming to town. So we'll get a chance now to see how good the Wolverines are, what they accomplished last year, especially in the punt and kickoff returns where they were first and second in the nation. Chucky Dukes and Joe Danucci are back deep for Boston College. There they are huddled up in the end zone. 33 is Dukes. Young man who's expected to see some action at running back. And kicking off is Albertson. He will handle the kickoff chores for Michigan here this afternoon. J.D. Carlson, of course, is their field goal specialist. So the schedule gets decidedly tougher after this week <laughs> for the Wolverines. They go home to Ann Arbor where their home opener will be against the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Now Boston College set to go to work here. Last week, Boston College fumbled the opening kickoff return against Rutgers. So they certainly don't want to start out that way today. The official, the referee Al Hines, huddling down on the 45. Now he got the 25 second clock information. Word was relayed from the press box that it might not be functioning properly so he wanted to alert the respective timekeepers to keep an eye on that ball on the tee for John Albertson <laughs> left footed kickoff it'll be fielded at the 10 by Dukes Ooh. Hit at the 25 and breaks free to about the 27-yard line for sophomore quarterback Glenn Foley. We'll go to work here this afternoon. Coach Coughlin wants a conservative attack, and that means we will see a lot out of the running backs here this afternoon behind Foley. Darnell Campbell, number 32, is his tailback, and Adam Womack, number 48, is his fullback. Now, they're going to try to disguise formations offensively as well. David Green steps in and replaces Campbell. So David Green, a surprise starter. Instead of Campbell, it is David Green. Keith Miller, Clarence Cannon, and Mark Chapura, number 89. There's the offensive line and the weights. Certainly not as big as the Michigan offensive line. And now it is Chucky Dukes who brings the play quickly in from the sideline. So they're going to try some young running backs here in the early going. Womack now moves back into the eye as the fullback in front of Dukes. And off a of fake, Foley's first pass to the tight end, Chamorro. First down to the Michigan 40-yard line. There's one of the more talented tight ends in the country. A 28-yard pass, Foley to Chamorro. D.J. 
defensively. Hutchison, the key man, with Stanley and Evans, the rush men. The linebackers, Townsend, Morrison, Anderson, and Davis. And the handoff is to David Green. What they did on that last play is went play action and ran Chamura down the seam in between the two deep safeties when they were playing double zone. Good play call. The defensive backs, and they were burned by Chamura. It's an inexperienced secondary except for Lance Dotton. There is number 22, Lance Dotton. We have an official's timeout on the field. Here's taking a look at the play action pass that was successful. Nice fake down inside. Nope, that's the wrong one. A 6'6, 237-pound tight end. He is also the long snapper for this Boston College team. A young man. Coach Coughlin calls him a vertical player, meaning he can stretch the field to the goal line from the line of scrimmage. He can get downfield and make the big play, as he just demonstrated. Now they split the backs, and David Green and Womack, and they give Foley. He's getting good time, and now he is rushed out of the pocket. On the move, throws complete. An extremely well-thrown ball to Green. How about these Eagles here on their first series? You know, Foley's doing today what he didn't do last week. He's making a a big play out of a broken play. As you'll see from this high end zone shot, as you look down on him, see he goes back, there's pressure on him inside. Last week, he didn't do a good job of impromptu handling the play. Here he does, he lays it out there, throws the perfect strike. Good coverage, but better execution offensively. The Eagles have moved inside the Michigan 35. Third down. the tailback battling for that first down it'll be close with the stop made by Stanley Michigan plays a defense even though they haven't played this year they're playing the same defense they played in the final game last year so it, it isn't difficult for Boston to zero in and go ahead and attack that defensive front but it'll I expect it to stiffen up a little bit here here comes the measurement This would be a big, big emotional boost to Boston College if they could go ahead and be successful on this drive. You know, no one gives them much of a chance coming into the ball game, Brent, and if they could start out successful, boy, what a lift. They are a four-touchdown underdog here this afternoon. Penalty marker down. Passes in. Intercepted by Dutton at the five-yard line is where he picked it off. But there is a penalty marker down as Dutton breaks free. Dutton down at the 42. Glenn Foley making the stop. And let's check that penalty. The way the players are reacting, it is against Boston College. Glenn Foley had problems last year throwing interceptions. He threw 21 of them, only 11 touchdowns. It's on the defense. It's on the defense. That's a lift. See, Foley had pressure in his face that time and unloaded the football. The receiver broke the route, rather staying with the route, threw it right to the defender. It wasn't so much an interception. He just threw him the football. Did you see Dotton run with the ball after he picked it off? Well, Dotton was a darn good athlete. You know, he was a great basketball player. You know, he's really skilled, so he has the ability to go ahead and run like a running back. Here's the play. See, now you'll notice he get pressure right in the face, right there. The route you saw in the center of your screen was broken off. He overthrew it. Dotton has the ball. Now he's a running back. And he looks like a pretty darn good one. Let's shift him over the, to the offensive side. So from the 25, Foley pulls back. Foley to the end zone. Touchdown, Boston College.
receivers to one side of the field. They stretched the defense. They went zone. He hit right in between the zones. And here a guy, Keith Miller, is making a touchdown reception. The other day on the practice field, he dropped three balls, and Coach Coughlin was all over him like a sweat. <laughs> and here he does. He comes up with a big one. Left-footed field goal specialist, Sean Wright. He adds the extra point. So Boston College, a 24-point underdog, scores first on second-ranked Michigan. What's up, fellas? Getting. Here's Keith Miller right here coming off the line of scrimmage in the slot formation. You'll see he releases. No one makes contact. They're zoned. They're not playing man-to-man. -man. You'll see Dot and 29 to the right side of your screen move inside, reading the quarterback's eyes just a little too much and not concentrating enough on the receiver in the end zone. Touchdown. And he likes it. <laughs> Can't celebrate for too long. One of the more dangerous kickoff return teams in college football on the field. Desmond Howard, number 21, is back deep with Derek Alexander, number one. There is Howard. He's the magic man. But if they kick it away from him, number one's not too bad either. Oh, man. I guess not. So it's going to be interesting to see what kind of strategy the special team will employ here as Jeff Beckley handles the kickoff duties for Boston College. They're going to take it high. Alexander at the 13. Looking for an alley. Oh, the Michigan pounces on it. Number 34 made the recovery for Michigan. That was Yale Van Dyne, backup wide receiver who got on it. Here he is taking the ball. He's got it tucked away nicely. He tucks it in there in that right arm. He's got it in against his body. He hits the lane. Good lead blockers. Gets a block at the point. Now he gets his elbow out away from your body. And when you do that, you really increase the, the opportunity to fumble in the football. You've got to keep the elbow in tight. So we've got an Elvis sighting here in Chestnut Hill, folks. <laughs> here he is. Elvis Gerback with Ricky Powers and Bernie Leggett, the fullback. And Leggett is offset. They'll throw on first down to Alexander. Very soft on the corner. And Alexander is out at the 47-yard line. They were way off Derek Alexander. And Gerbeck fired the ball. So that's about a 10-yard cushion. Now behind Gerbeck, here's the talent. Leggett, Powers, Alexander, and Howard. Not a weakness there. Or how about this offensive line? If you subtract Dave Diebold, that line averages almost 300 pounds. Led by Skrepanak at 325. Lean and mean, a pure fighting machine down there, folks. <laughs> left tackle number 75. Like that huge hole in the middle. Big problem here for that defensive line. Like get to the 37. You can see that 265, 251, and 267. The linebackers, Jones, Tom McManus, Howlett, and Pahopek. Back in the secondary, redshirt freshman, Michael Reed, also Joe Kamara, giving up a lot of experience. Now second and inches for the Wolverines, who got a wake-up call a short time ago. Powers on a cutback for the first down. You notice that time that Michigan went with two tight ends, and what they do that for is to try to stabilize the defensive front and stop them from overshifting to the tight end. When you have two tight ends in there, then you have to make a decision. Sometimes you line up and play straight, and if you do that against Michigan's big front, you're in trouble. Reed is 12 yards off Alexander. Penalty marker down. Alexander is hit hard. Stolberg cleaned up. That was number 57, John Stolberg. He is a very, Stolberg is a very intense player. He didn't practice Thursday because he has a shoulder problem, but he said he would be there game day. <laughs> He's sort of like one of those rough, uh, you know, junkyard dog type guys. You know, it doesn't look too good. It doesn't shave very often. And With Michigan not using an offensive huddle, it fouls up the defense just a little in that they cannot stem or move the defensive fronts as much as they had planned to coming into the ball game. Stay back, stay back, stay back. 
Coach Tom Coffin with the white hat there. The new head coach. Was that an illegal substitution? Was that the, I believe that's what this fraction is. And Michigan will be taken back to the 38 yard line. Coach Gary Moeller calls all the offense. Head coach and offensive coordinator. He's coached both sides of the ball. And he's one of the head coaches that stays really in touch with the X's and O's of the game. He likes that. That's what's fun to him is teaching the game technically. Boston College 7, Michigan nothing. Early in the first quarter, Gerbeck the quarterback. Off a fake to Powers, Gerbeck throws complete to Howard. And Howard is out of bounds inside the 25-yard line. Dick, it's going to be tough for these young corners. It really is, because you don't get enough pressure with that big offensive line. Michigan only gave up three sacks in 12 games last year, and now they tie it in with play action, what makes linebackers read the run, makes defensive linemen read the run. He's out there with no underneath help, one-on-one, -on -one, like you say, really tough on Desmond Howard. Van Dyne replaces Howard. He is outside to Gerbeck's right. The slot is Alexander. Powers the ball carrier, and he's buried by the middle of that defense. Michigan needing just a yard, and Pahopic, number 46, made the stop. You know who did a pretty good job on that was the big defensive end, Ron Stone, number 67, who was lined up in front of the big offensive tackle, the 325-pound Skrapenic. He did a pretty good job. He hung in there, held his ground. Third down and less than a yard. Two tight ends. Leggett's the fullback. Powers the call. Oh, and nice play. Hit at the point of attack. May have come off to the left, but that was number 53, Tom McManus, who played an outstanding game against Rutgers last week. McManus, inside linebacker, see him attacking the line of scrimmage. He sheds a blocker. Now watch him work right up in there. 25 tackles last week. As you said, Brent, he, he knows where that ball carrier is. May have stopped his forward progress short of the first down, but Michigan can go on fourth. Here come the chains. Gerback already huddling with Moeller. That's how they are just short. See, now with the with the new field goal post being moved in that four foot ten inches, Brent, coaches get inside that 30, 35 yard line. I think their initial thinking is going to be four downs for a first down. Gerbeck changes up at the line. It's a goal line almost defensively. Powers cut back, busts out of the first hitter was McManus. He spun away, and it's going to pen, depend air short. They did not get it. Oh, McManus, number 53, stood tall again in the middle of that defense. Well, McManus made 69 tackles last year. He's made 128 in his career. He just made two more for 130. And these two tackles were maybe the biggest two tackles of his college career. Now Boston College having scored on its first possession. They got a break, remember, on a pass that was intercepted. Michigan was offside. Now Darnell Campbell, number 32, comes in as the running back. Oh. Foley slips down. You know, many times when the quarterback slips like that, Brent, the center steps back and steps on his forward foot before the quarterback can get it out of the way, and it trips him. You see that happen quite often. Let's take a look and see if we can point it out. See his feet right there? Now, see the center's right, the center's right foot came back and stepped on it, and that's Tom Nalen, number 64, stepping on his foot. Lost almost five yards on that play. Campbell and Womack are the running backs. Foley, the sophomore out of Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Hands to Campbell. Campbell into the middle, still short of the original line of scrimmage. This is going to be third and long, and they're going to force Foley 
to put it up here as Sylvester Stanley makes another stop defensively. There's Sylvester. You know, Sylvester Stanley only played in three games last year. He had a pinched nerve problem and had to sit out the rest of the season. But they, Lloyd Carr, the defensive coordinator, really thought he was going to have a great year last year. He couldn't because of the neck problem. Anticipates him playing real well this year. Keith Miller in from the sideline. Three wide receivers. Two to Foley's left. Almost the touchdown formation as Foley goes back under heavy pressure. Gets it off to the safety valve. He overthrew Chamura incomplete and Boston College forced a punt. Chris Hutchinson, number 97, the defensive end, got the pressure on him. No place to go quickly with the football. Scramble back, tried to lay it off. Incomplete pass. Good pressure. Lloyd Carr. Defensive coordinator Michigan said the number one thing we've got to do this year, believe it or not, is improve our tackling. The games we lost, the tight games we lost last year was because we didn't tackle well. And as fundamental as that sounds, Brent, they are really strength emphasizing proper technique and, and, and really doing a good job of tackling. Kushner, a short punt. It's high. And it goes out of bounds, and Michigan will have good field position when you come back. Michigan's going to be inside the BC 40-yard line. 581 to nothing over Cincinnati. You couldn't do that against the high school team, could you? Did Jimmy Johnson replace Joe Paterno this week? I don't know. Joe's opening that attack up. Hey, we get to see that in a couple weeks against BYU, don't we? Now, it was only a 16-yard punt. So here come the Wolverines, and boy, do they want one. Down seven, favored by four touchdowns. Gerbeck's going to go long right away. Alexander wide open, turns out to the right. And he is to the 14-yard line. They are so soft over here on this corner. Alexander can have whatever he wants. Take a look from the high end zone from behind the quarterback. You'll see eye formation, token fake. Not really emphasize the run out that too much. Pressure inside. He gets it off in time. Little curl in pattern. Then he turns and breaks it away. Nothing like having that the elusive running ability after making the catch and Tom McManus has to go all the way back and make the stop now the Wolverines are inside the 15 yard line powers behind Leggett there's a jump defense they'll run to the left a cutback by powers and he is to the 12 yard line and you know who number 53 this guy McManus grew up in the Chicago area Undoubtedly, he worships at the shrine of Dick Butkus. You'll see McManus, he'll make the play from the right side of your screen. He'll come inside. Now watch him. Here he comes. Boom, right there. He gets a ricochet. There he comes and puts his hat right across the beam. Gets his shoulders into the man properly. Good technique. Second down for the Wolverines. Alexander's to the right. They lob for him. Incomplete. They overthrew him on the fade pattern. He and Howard ran a crossing route coming out. Trying to catch him in man-to-man -man coverage. See, again, now you have to start thinking field goal because you have third and nine. Unless you can come up with the, you know, the, the seven or eight-yard gain on this third down play, you've got to think field goal, and you also have to start thinking about field goal position to put the ball in a better position to kick, move it over to the middle. There's J.D. Carlson. Remember, they have reduced they have the distance of most five feet on the field goals. Timeout has been taken by Michigan. So Michigan takes a timeout. They have to think about what Dick Vermeil was telling you, positioning the ball for the field goal man. And we'll be right back. A third down. Elvis Gerback has the play in from Moeller's sideline after the timeout. The ball is at the Boston College 13. The Eagles lead Michigan 7 0. Three wide receivers now. Michigan has Van Dyne, Howard, and Alexander. Leggett, he is the blocking back. Gerbeck is back over the middle, drops it off to Van Dyne short of the first down. It is fourth down. You know, fourth down good call and everything they're in a bad position though now to kick the field goal if he'd have stayed to the wide man in the slot formation brent he had a touchdown
They turned him loose going to the corner of the end zone. All he had to do was lob it out there. Now, but see the extreme angle. They will offset the protection for the field goal, lining up one more man to the right side of the football than to the left, because the ball will actually cross over the center of the formation at the right guard position. Ken Solon, the holder. J.D. Carlson, no good. There's a problem with the rule change. Again, that extreme angle. Hash marks 17 feet, 5 inches wider than an NFL hash mark, but the goal post's the same. Tougher on the college kicker. Michigan has to be very upset. They could not convert after a 16-yard punt. They had that ball first and 10 inside the BC 40-yard right. line. Yes, you bet. But see, they have the, di the only disadvantage Michigan has is that they haven't played a game. The only advantage Boston has is they've played one. Campbell is the running back behind the right side of the offensive line on first down. You know, in watching Campbell last week, he ran tentatively and watching them against Rutgers. He just wasn't aggressive. He looks more aggressive already today than he did last week. He comes out and Green checks in. David Green along with Adam Womack, 48, are the two running backs. Big surprise in the early going here at Boston College. The Eagles seven, the Michigan Wolverines nothing. Foley gets pass protection, fires high, deflected, could be intercepted. It's intercepted. On side. You know, that's what's a shame about a quarterback. It's batted ball, it's intercepted, it goes as an interception. And defensive secondary people, secondary coaches like Bill Harris at Michigan, coach defensive backs to keep moving to the ball when it's batted so they have the opportunity to intercept. Let's see what they're ruling. I think they ruled it incomplete. Okay. A break. Take a look again. Now you'll see the ball will be thrown to your left side of the screen. He sets up. He'll come right off the running back's hands. Now watch it pop in the air. Now the defensive back comes off. There it is. Dwayne Ware going for it. Obviously the official in a good position to recognize what happened. Incomplete pass. Two huge breaks have gone against Michigan. Dotton intercepts on the touchdown drive. Offsides calls that back. Now... Appeared to be an interception on the far side is nullified as he was juggling the ball going down. Now Foley on third down under a heavy rush. Fires complete to the first down. Out to the 43-yard line to Clarence Cannon, number 27. What's happening is they're spreading Michigan's defense all the way across the field with the three wide receivers. Strength to the formation to the right side of your screen, getting coverage that way. Now he throws back to the weak side of the field, short side of the field, in the zone, big hole, good protection, first down. So a 22-yard gain on third down. Foley back again. He's going to throw on first down. He's got a wide-open receiver. Cannon again. Out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Oh boy, 27 more yards. Michigan came back with the same double coverage. The corner rolls up, the corner rolls up. Two deep safe. Now the receiver comes off and jumps outside and gets into the seam before the safety can get over there. Take a look, drop back pass. Now watch the receiver jump to the outside. He fires it right in the crease. Did a good job, safety has to get there a little quicker and the corner has to do a better job of chucking the receiver. Foley calls the play at the line. Cannons his wide receiver out to the right, and Miller down here to the left side. He's going to put it up again on first down. They're able to throw against the secondary. That time, his wide receiver, Cannon, was double covered. He threw it out of bounds. Well, I'll tell you, that was a good changeup uh, pass defense called by Lloyd Carr. They gave him the double coverage to the side he threw. He played single coverage on the left side of the offensive formation. He should have come over to the left side of the formation with the ball. Second down and 10. Four and a half minutes left here in the opening quarter. Glenn Foley firing complete. And that goes to Pete Mitchell, number 82, the other tight end, who was 
Mark Chamura back there. Mitchell figures to run free a few times as he did there. You'll see they're using a tight end in motion. He went all across, and they'll run a delay underneath the zone in front of the linebacker. See, the defense was pushed deep by the other receivers. He comes underneath and forces the linebackers to attack forward to make the play. Eric Anderson, number 37, made that play. Clint Kubiyama from Honolulu, number 21, checks in as a wide receiver. Now it's third and three for Foley, and he fires to Chamura for the tight end. For the first down, the tight end gets it for him. What a great control receiver he is. Oh, he is, and he has the speed to go deep at that, you know, four, five, five speed, you know. Uh, what he maybe lacks right now, Brent, is the ability to knock that strong side outside linebacker off the line of scrimmage and blocking technique. I think he can have it any way he wants against this Michigan secondary right now. Yeah, they're well, not having trouble throwing the ball at all. They're having, uh, Michigan secondary is having a hard time adjusting to the multiple formations and the three receivers to one side right now. Campbell checks in. A lot of substituting going on on the part of BC. Off a of fake. Here's Foley rolling right. And he hits incomplete. Too low to Mitchell, and it's incomplete. It'll be second down to 10. Who was the best tight end you ever had with the Philadelphia Eagles? Keith Greffley. Now, Spagnola wasn't bad. No, Spagnola wasn't bad. He's gotten better since I, he joined the ABC you booth. You know, got Spagnola right behind you <laughs> monitoring today. I right, set you up on that one. You know, if you'd asked him, he'd have told you the same thing. <laughs> Second down and 10. David Green is the running back. In case you just joined us now, Boston College with a seven-point lead against a sputtering Michigan team here in the first quarter. This is Green. Daylight to the left. A good defensive play that time by David Ritter. Number 29 stayed right with him. What Boston College did that time, Brent, is they put the big tackle, right tackle, over on the left side in a tight end position and shifted the tight end over to the right side so they could run up behind two big offensive tackles to try to take advantage of that blocking force. How close would you watch number 89, Shamur? Right now, I would, I would bet my money they're going to try to get him the football. Here, come off the line to the right. There are three wide receivers. Foley looking in his direction. Going to throw deeper and incomplete. Chamura was open. The problem was he did not have first down yardage. They were using him to attract the linebackers and pull them off. And Chamura was just coming inside, as you'll see here on an isolation. Here's Chamura, right side of your screen. See number 89 him. Now he's trying to control the linebackers and prevent them from dropping. He does a good job right there. And Anderson is up there. The receiver was in behind. He threw it in accurately. So we'll have a field goal attempt here by Sean Wright, the left-footed kicker. So Glenn Foley, and boy, his pops has got to be happy. His dad was a quarterback here at Boston College back in the 60s. Watching his son here lead Michigan 7-0. There's the field goal attempt, and it's good. A three-pointer for Sean Wright. A 34-yard field goal makes it Boston College 10, Michigan nothing. And let's go down and meet Glenn Foley's father, who's with Cheryl Miller. Cheryl? Thanks, Brent. Well, you know Ed has to be a very happy father right now. And you were telling me earlier that you feel that the team really worked out the teams against Rutgers. Well, we had a rough week where there was a lot of mistakes being made, and the coaches really worked them hard, and they were disappointed. But I think they wanted to come back here with a strong, a strong showing and, uh, you know, and really put it together. Where have you seen your son Glenn improve the most in this game? Well, I think he's got to have a lot of poise. He's got to hang in the pocket and wait for the open receiver. And uh, you can't, he has a very strong arm, and you can't force the passes. You've got to wait till somebody becomes open. Well, thanks a lot, Ed. Enjoy the game. And Ed played here at BC in 63-65. He was a quarterback, so you can tell that Glenn is a chip off the old block. Yeah. Gerald, in one year, he surpassed Pops in passing yardage. <laughs> You know that Glenn Foley was coached as a quarterback coach by Joe Pasarsic. Now, you New York fans will remember Joe Pasarsic. One of their favorites. And, and one of my favorite quarterbacks in Philadelphia. <laughs> I'd say. He coaches the Foley's, and I understand there's a younger Foley there in high school right now. So, Beckley, with the ball on the tee, he got some uneasy folks watching back in the Detroit Ann Arbor area right now. I'll tell you that. 10-0, and Boston College indicating they came to play. Here's Alexander. What Boston College didn't do well last week was cover the punts and kickoffs. They're doing it better today. Got him short of the 25-yard line. And speaking of Michigan, I can't wait to see the new turf at Ann Arbor. 
3.30 Eastern. You think Notre Dame will try to throw against Michigan next week? I think so. The Irish will come in and take on the Wolverines. Maybe Michigan with an eye on that game. And then later, next Saturday night at 9 Eastern from the West Coast, Penn State an 81 to nothing winner and USC a loser against Memphis State. But folks, the Trojans will show up. <laughs> I just can't. I mean, I was shocked when I read that score, but you can't ever take anybody for granted as it's being displayed here right now in this first quarter. Couple of idols. Houston with a big one on Thursday night against Miami. All right, first and 10 now. And here is Ooh. Powers who ran into one of his own men coming through the middle there. And McManus and Stephen Boyd jammed him up. They are not using a huddle, but I think McManus is getting it in anyway. <laughs> There's number 53. He's playing a whale of a game defensively here so far. His dad also was a college football player, Brent, he, but he played at Rutgers. Now three wide receivers for Elvis Gerback. It's a 10-point lead by Boston College. Quick pop Quick to screen. Howard. They go to work on the young corner Reed over here. He's a redshirt freshman. And then McManus quickly comes back to help out on the tackle. Are they going to play that soft all game? Dick, will they be able to get away with no, it? No, I, I think they're going to stay back there. They don't want to give them the big play. Steve Zabo said, we know they're going to score on us, but we want them to run 14, 16 plays to score, but not in the one play. See, Michigan got over, like you said, on the three receivers to one side up to the top of the formation there in the field and then came back to the one on one side with a screen pass to the wide receiver. Very good call. This little stadium starting to rock. It's it starting is. to sound like Fenway Park with a rally going in the bottom of the eighth. Timeout by Gerbeck. That's his second. second. That's his second timeout. And it's his first game. That's why they probably had some communication problems. I kind of believe the defensive game plan of moving the fronts around, don't line up in the same front twice in a row, line up, if it looks the same, if you give them the same look, then they slant back and make it a different look, is confusing the Michigan front seven right now. How about Jackie Sherrill? Beat Texas today. Did he really? He wound up at Texas A&M with about four straight wins against them. Look at Iowa. They were big, they were a quick 14. I watched them block a punt for a touchdown here in the early going to that one against Hawaii. That must have been in Iowa, though. It was. It's easier to beat uh, Hawaii <laughs> over here than it is over there. You know, they still wear grass skirts over there. <laughs> yeah, it's a distraction <laughs> to your football team. Yes. <laughs> your coaches are all alike. <laughs> you know? <laughs> One fifteen to go. And the Michigan offensive players are huddling over there at about the 27-yard line around the coaches. You know, one of Gary Moeller's offensive goals this year is to improve third down conversion. Last year, they were 42% successful in converting a third down situation, including short yardage situations, and he wants to get that up to beyond the 50% level. Monday night, the Redskins and the Cowboys at 9 Eastern time here on ABC. Another good one coming up. An improving Cowboy team, and the Redskins were awesome against the Lions last Sunday night. So now, for the Wolverines, here it is a third down and four. Gerbeck with time, throws complete. Howard on the far side, out to the 40-yard line, and a first down again, not giving up the big play. Yeah. Very good pass protection. And the action, even though it's third down and four, he makes a fake. Now, watch the offensive line operate here. They run a stunt up at the top. Look at it, using their hands. Nice walled off there. No one can get at the quarterback. Gives him time to throw it out there. Uh, Howard is the outside receiver to the right. And they put Van Dyne as the inside man there toward the bottom of your screen. And Gerbeck throws incomplete. I had the opportunity to visit with Gerback yesterday on the practice field, and I asked him about the offense coming in this year in contrast to what it ended last year. And he says, Coach, is the same offense, but he says, it's just better to define everybody now. Gary Moore's offense has been intact for a year. We're coming in the second year. Better definition in everything we're doing. I, I think we're going to be better. Ball is at the Michigan 41-yard line inside of a minute remaining in the opening quarter. 
Powers, big hole in the middle, Cook bust free. Only the center fielder to beat, and he is shakes the tackle, he'll go for the Michigan touchdown. Ricky Powers explodes with a penalty marker coming down at the 11-yard line. You'll see that the tail back here is handed off in the eye, and he breaks the crack up there behind man-to-man -man blocking. Here it is. A Here clipping goes. play. Dick will nullify the touchdown, but go ahead there. Here is lead block. Good block by Luckett. Here, now there's a missed tackle right there. See, you have to make those kind of tackles, especially when you're in that safety position. This is one reason that Michigan on the other side has said our number one goal is to improve our tackling now from the foul the foul is brought back so powers touchdown run is nullified it comes out to the 25 you talk about a first quarter that Michigan fans want to forget they had intercepted a pass on BC's scoring drive early in the game that was nullified now they explode 59 yards for a touchdown that one is brought back two huge penalties against the Wolverines here in the first quarter it winds up a fine 48 yard run nevertheless and it's first and 10 now for Gerbeck and the Wolverines they're down by 10 to get the fullback is stood up in the middle by Stephen Boyd number 50. I think it's going to be very tough for him to run the fullback up inside there. The tailback, I think, will make some yards because they use that fullback so efficiently and lead blocking on linebackers like they did in the play that just broke for the long run. And Bernie Leggett, number 40, is a fine blocking linebacker, a fullback. The freshman sensation that we've all been hearing about has checked in. Number six, Tyrone Wheatley. Circle right there is the tailback had an unbelievably productive high school athletic career. They bring the end around with the magic man, Howard, and it was well defended by Boston College. Jay McGillis, the strong safety, maintained the discipline, came back over and made the play. It looked like it was going to be better from up here. The end of the first quarter, and these BC fans love it. Derek, hold it right there. You'll see Derek Alexander right here, clip right here. Not a necessary block. He's already beaten the man. He's already in the end zone almost, just being a little bit too aggressive in the first ball game. That's exactly right. First game, a little jitter, yep. making some mistakes. Now, third down and four. Alexander and Van Dyne are out to Gerbach's left. Howard to his right. And Leggett is the lone running back. Now we decide, we see here if they're running, going to go two plays for four yards or one play for the first down if they don't make it field goal. They've missed one field goal already today. It's a 10-0 Boston they're coming after him. The fade to the end zone and Howard for the touchdown. What a spectacular catch. A 19-yard beauty. They came after him with a blitz, had the one-on-one -on -one coverage. You'll see right here, here they come, coming right in there. You'll see those are linebackers. Now that means that your cornerback is one-on-one -on, -one on a skilled athlete. The ball, he can't see it coming, falls right in position to make the play. Well done. Boy, if you come with those blitzes, you better find a way to get there, or at least harass the guy so he can't throw it accurately. 74 straight extra points for J.D. Carlson and counting. He has moved to within one of Ali Haji Sheik. So the Magic Man puts the Wolverines on the board in this new football season. We'll be right back. Up and picks up the splitzing linebacker. This allows him the time to get it off. See, if he gets there, if he whips, whips that fullback, they don't make that play. Good job by Bernie Leggett, number 40. Now Boston College will need to go back to work offensively. Danucci and Dukes are the two deep men. And there's the fullback who fired out with that block on a blitzing linebacker. You know, he's not only a fine blocker, he is an outstanding student. Feels it in the end zone, and 
the touchback will bring it out to the 20-yard line. Let's take a look at the first quarter numbers here as Boston College had the important number, a 10-0 lead, Dick. Well, I think what it's going to show that the stats are pretty even as you look at 151 to 131. Neither team a turnover. First down's pretty even. A actually, you're, you have to say that Boston College ha has surprised everybody, including you and me. Uh, yeah, I'd say. Especially after studying last week's game what? films. Or tapes. Nowadays. I don't know about me. I don't know about you. <laughs> <laughs> Campbell is the, is the running back behind Foley. Foley has been calm in that pocket. This is Chamura. The All-American tight end out to the 25. If you're wondering about his NFL potential, a lot is going to depend on which franchise drafts him. He's not a wide-body tight end, as you can see. You're not going to be able to line up behind Mark Chimmer and have him take on a linebacker time after time. But if you want a very versatile performer who's a splendid wide receiver as a tight end, he also is a long snapper. And now Womack and Green check in as the running backs. See a major shift in formation, changing the strength of the formation. Michigan, Michigan didn't move very much, though. This is Green, short of the first down. They're going to be in third and short now. You notice that time that Boston College lined the offense strong side left, got the defense thinking strong side right, then shifted over, moved the strength, and then ran behind the strength of their new shift, hoping that the defense didn't come back with them. Two yards for the first down. Campbell, the running back. He'll try it. Into the He's middle got of that defense, he gets the first down for Boston College. Mike Evans, 92, tackling him. He ran up behind Matt Metz, number 78, and Mike Jovanovich, number 72, on the right side of the offensive line. Just base blocking, man to man. Did I see rain delay on a college football game? <laughs> well, must have been some lightning involved. Yeah, it have to be. Have to be. Campbell. The running back. Cannon back in as a wide receiver. Ooh, pressure. Under pressure. Foley running away from it. Throws it. Oh, it was a diving attempt for the interception by Otis Williams. Probably an ill-advised throw in that situation. Chris Hutchinson, number 97, the defensive right tackle for Michigan. Whip Dan Britton to the inside. And I think we can see this from the high end zone over here. You'll see to the left side of your screen, C-79 pass setting. He got beat to the inside, didn't do a good job of jamming, didn't do a good job of slowing him down. Forced him to run out of the pocket, almost throws the interception. You know the reason why the ball slipped out of his hand at the end. Ball it is. Over the middle, first down to Cannon. This sophisticated passing attack uh, of the New York Giants, a la Tom McLaughlin, put it, Tom Coughlin putting in right here, is really confusing the secondary right now. You'll see here that they're going to take Coughlin and run him underneath and then bring the wide receiver down in in the square in pattern for the completion. See it? Now there goes the crossing pattern. That goes the linebacker. There it is, one-on-one -on -one coverage. First and 10, and Foley runs away from the pressure. Daylight and Foley for the first down. Inside Michigan's 40-yard line, a 13-yard run by the sophomore quarterback from New Jersey. Here you are. You're right in the pits. Here's a play action right there. He wants to throw, but here comes Anderson, number 37. He flushes him. Now Foley shows the mobility and the presence of mind to tuck the ball up underneath and slide in to second base. Now the Eagles leading it by a field goal. Foley moves the pocket. Good block by his right tackle. Throws complete to the 25-yard line. He hit Clarence Cannon again. That was a designed scramble play where the quarterback goes straight back and then he comes out and then they peel off. Now watch the peel off block right there by Jovanovic, number 72, top of your screen. That gave him the room to get outside comfortably all the time in the world to make the throw. I think I said it was Cannon. Let me correct that. That was Miller. First and 10. Oh, and Buster Pepe. Stanley. 
it was against number 60 Stanley. You know, I had a chance to talk with Tom Nalen, the offensive center, number 64, about the nose guard play of Michigan, and I, I asked him if he'd been studying much tape, and he said, yes, coach, but the nose guard that played there last year has graduated, and boy, am I glad of that. <laughs> Yeah, Michigan like to have that nose man back about right now. Yeah, that was uh, T.J. Osmond last year graduated, but Buster Stanley is going to be a good one. He'll watch this play, however. First and five after the five-yard penalty. The Eagles, after giving up a touchdown, bring it right back down. They're at the 20-yard line. With the delay, it's Campbell. And they'll need a couple of yards for the first. That was a draw tackle trap where the left tackle came across and tried to trap a pass rusher. So 45-year-old Tom Coughlin has Gary Moeller very concerned on that far side. Wide receivers coach for the New York Giants who played alongside Larry Zonka and Floyd Little during his collegiate days at Syracuse. Campbell is the lone running back. He'll get the call, daylight, first down. Good blocking by the tight end at the point of attack when you're able to slip outside like that. So the Irish will roll into Ann Arbor with a win, it appears. Penn State with 81 points today. Michigan here, ranked number two, trailing Boston College, 10-7. The Eagles threatening again. And Campbell on a cutback gets to the seven-yard line. You know, you're down here inside the 10-yard line. You might as well go ahead and get after them with some blitzes. Michigan feels they are better equipped to blitz offensive teams this year because they have better speed all through the secondary than last year. You might as well, you don't have to cover them for very long down there. You might as well come after them. What did the Eagles show you passing-wise going in from the 20-yard line? Who do they like to go to? They like to try to get the ball to Shimura away from coverage. He's at the top left-hand corner of the screen. Well, now's the time to use that play if they've got it. They've got a third down about the five-yard line. They can get a first down inside the two-yard line. Womack and Green will come in as running backs. Campbell trots out here into the shadows on the near side. Womack, 48, the fullback. See if they've got a pass designed to Womack. They slip him out of the backfield. Fire high, deflected, intercepted by Michigan. That was they a bad wanted throw. Shimura. Brent, that was just a bad decision by a young quarterback, and he knows that. Look at the grin on his face. He went straight, drop back, tight end hook in the middle between the linebackers. Both people covering. You'll see the tight end hook to the inside, to the right side of your screen right now. There are people all over it. No one in there. In fact, there were too many offensive receivers in there. Not a good decision by young Glenn Foley. So Steve Morrison with the first interception against Glenn Foley this season. A year ago, that was his problem. Yes. 21 interceptions. You know, when a young quarterback makes that kind of mistake, Brent, normally they make it because they predetermine in their mind what they're going to do with the football on the snap, rather than coming back there and allowing the defense to dictate what they're going to do. So Morrison with a big save for the Wolverines. And Tyrone Wheatley, number six, into the backfield here for Michigan. He's the tailback. On the nice fake to him, Gerbach's going to go for the home run. He wants Howard. Howard! Almost intercepted off the deflection. McGillis, 31, had the coverage, and Michael Reed almost picked off the ricochet. They were back in a two-deep defense, two safeties dividing the field in half. He tried to get down there. I actually think they took way too much time to throw the football. It was an excellent fake. It fooled everybody up in front, but it didn't fool the two deep safeties. That ball should have been intercepted. I've been talking about Tyrone Wheatley, number six out of Dearborn Heights. As a senior in high school, he won the 100 meters, the 110 meter high hurdles, the long jump. And folks, he scored 253 points as a senior running back and a kicker. 
soon, but not this time. Gerbeck again going to go down. Wants Alexander, and it's deflected away by Kamara. That's not where Gerbeck wanted to go with the football. I don't think he wanted to throw the ball over there. He didn't have anybody else to go to. He's looking over there. He's hesitating. Usually when you're going deep, Brent, you don't hesitate with the football. You put it up if you're going that way. See, by looking left and throwing left, that much time, that gave the safety the jump to get over there. A little impatient. Certainly not what anyone was accustomed to in the Bo Schimbeckler era. And here's Wheatley now. Out to the 23-yard line. McManus gets him. You know, when a team is a heavy favorite, like Michigan was, it's a negative for them, but it's an awfully good positive for the other team, the team that's the real underdog. And mentally, you really get that lift. Seven tackles for McManus already here in the first half. Eddie has Kona to punt. And back deep is Kubayama. Ooh, nice punt, Brad. Has really got it up there. A high punt. Kubayama driven inside the 30. Good coverage by Dwayne Ware. Boston College 10, Michigan 7, and we're coming right back. Boston College 10, Michigan 7, with Cheryl Miller and Dick Vermeil. I'm Brent Musburger. Nice to have you along for what could be a very enjoyable ride here this afternoon from Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. And a reminder that at the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet most valuable player from each team. And for the 21st year, through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. And here is Glenn Foley. Firing complete to Chamura, the tight end. Out to the 32-yard line. See, they're going to get the ball to Chamura. What they can't do is force it to him. Only get it to him when the coverage allows it. You'll see Chamura here coming off the line of scrimmage, the, the left side of your screens. He's just going to work inside in the zone. He's going to find a little hole. He's going to sit over there, and now he's going to settle down. See, now he's going to work, and you can see that he has those running abilities. He's the fourth-ranked tight end in college football starting this season for the pro draft. Figures to wind up the all-time receiving leader here at Boston College. On second down, this is Green following Womack through a big crease. Another BC first down. Eric Anderson, number 37, makes the stop. You know, the offensive line coached by Mike Mazur, who's been here for a number of years, is doing an awfully good job of controlling that physical defensive front and also controlling the slants of the Michigan defensive linemen. Syracuse trailed in that one early. And here is Georgia jumping on Curly Hallman's LSU team today. Purdue big. Foley back for Boston College. He got a beautiful grab by Chamura. What great hands. Yeah, good job. Again, they were in a slot formation. They were in a slot formation away, and you'll see down here, they're gonna work a little zone pattern. He'll widen them, and he'll work right into here, into the zone. See, they have them spread all the way across the field. Now watch Jamara work to the outside, see? That stretches that zone in that area pretty good. Miller and Cannon are the wide men. Foley back, complete to Cannon at the Michigan 45-yard line, and Morrison makes the stop. Boston College did a good job of picking up the line backer blitz that time he got right in there the running back stepped up picked him up gave him the time to throw that completed ball 13 more yards and Foley is already more productive here in the first half than he was the entire game against Rutgers last week he threw nine for 29 that's 31 percent complete Chucky Dukes the running back Kubiyama goes in motion Shermer changes to the other side of the line of scrimmage. Here comes Dukes trying to get outside the Michigan linebacker, which he does. A good, tough run to the 40-yard line, and Henderson brings him down. Martin Davis didn't, did, didn't do a real good job, the outside linebacker, number 86, on that play. You'll see Davis here. He was working inside out on the play, and he just didn't make it. You'll see Chamura, number 89, blocking on Dave. Here he is. Now, see, he chucks him. He's trying to hook him. Now, he's working outside pretty good. 
but he pulls him down and he just can't get in to make that play. Now Chimura was a little down. slow getting up. Foley, oh, back. holding protection deflected Ooh. away from Chimura by Anderson. Oh, fine play by the or Morrison. Excuse yeah. me, let me check that. Number 36, Morrison making a fine play. If I were Pete Mitchell that time, I would be complaining like a son of a gun. They were running a crossing pattern with the two tight ends, and one of the Michigan linebackers just grabbed him and spun him around, and he didn't do anything. Inexperienced. Throw a fit when they do that, young man. Now it's third down. The ball is at the Michigan 40. And Foley uses a timeout here in the first half. Boston College leading Michigan 10-7. So Notre Dame leading big over Indiana in the fourth quarter. The Hoosiers played well, especially in the first half. And Georgia up 17 on LSU in the second quarter. Washington over Stanford by a couple of touchdowns in the second quarter. And Ohio State leading Arizona 10-7 in the second quarter. So the last three of those games all being covered by ABC today along with this one here Boston College in Michigan and of course next week 3:30 Eastern the Fighting Irish will be in Ann Arbor five and a half minutes to go Joe Danucci checks in and the shotgun is shown for the first time here by Boston College this afternoon they did use it last week against Rutgers Foley steps away from trouble and is finally brought down by Chris Hutchinson Good pass rush that time by Martin Davis down in a three-point stance. You'll see here now shotgun formation. Normally you get more time it, but, but to the right side of your screen, there is Martin Davis, 86. He strips it, and here comes Hutchinson to put him down. That's really one of the few times that the, the pass rush has really harassed him. That offensive tackle has to stretch that guy a little bit more, Brent, and getting further away from the quarterback. Bill Kushner standing inside the BC 40 to punt it. Oh, nice punt. Hangs it high, and it'll go into the end zone and come out of the 20-yard line. So Michigan with 449 to work with here in the first half. They're down by a field goal. A powerful team favored by four touchdowns. They've been a little impatient from time to time here. Well, you know, Brent, what I'd like to see them do is to go ahead and get that ball outside with the running game and then also uh, go back to that play-action passing but not trying to go deep with it. Throw it in front of those corners because they're playing back off the ball and if it's double zone, just hook up inside there. There's a lot of room to throw the ball and I think they will eventually be doing that. Ricky Powers returns as the tailback. Dave Diebel, the tight end, is on the left side of this formation. Powers cut back in the middle and brought down at the 33-yard line. Ricky Powers with a first down run. Good lead blocking by the fullback. Now, Boston College jumped into the Buddy Ryan 46 defense that time, and they ran away from the strength of the defense and hit it over there on that weakest side and got the good block from Leggett. You'll see Leggett here to the right side of your screen. He will appear. Now, follow him. He gets the block right there. Nice block, pin block right there, and opens up the hole. So Powers out of Akron, Ohio, the sophomore. Wound up with four consecutive 100-yard games. He's following Leggett. <laughs> on this play as they go to the fullback. He says, you know, I did a good job blocking last time. Give me the ball and let me carry it. So they run a little gap up inside. This guy had a chance to visit with him yesterday in the practice field. Outstanding student. Also came to Michigan as a high school student body president. 49 touchdowns in his career in high school. I'd say they recruited a pretty good guy. How's our guy Greg Skrepanek doing down there? Number 75. Down. He's having some problems. And they run up the middle against this defense. And they were tripped up on this play. You, Brett, you asked me that question. You know, the defensive linemen aren't lining up on Skrepnik and trying to whip him physically right there. They're lining up and slanting away outside him or slanting underneath him. So he just doesn't have a solid target to come up and knock off the ball. Well, maybe they'll saddle up behind him here. It's third and short. I would. He's on left side, number 75. He's the tackle. He looks like he's audible. 
They run to the right with Powers for the first down, and he's oh. knocked out of bounds by Reed. Again, another real nice job by Bernie Leggett, number 40, playing for the number one draft choice, Jared Bunch, who played for the Giants on Monday night's football game against the Niners. He really did a nice job of going over there and cutting the outside linebacker so the play could jump to the outside. Now, you'll watch, follow the fullback. See, he will just keep, look at him, see him cut him down right there, see that guy goes down like a bowling pin. Oh, again. Good job. Good job by Stephen Boyd. Stepped up inside that trap. Stephen did a nice job. Ohio State jumping up another one. Pittsburgh an improved team this year. I think you're right, Brent. I think they will be much better. I was at a golf tournament with some of the Pittsburgh assistant coaches, the Big 33, and they're confident they're going to be better. Second down for Michigan. They trail Boston College 10-7. And this is the hand to Wheatley, the freshman. Just a lead draw play. Reminder that coming up at halftime, we'll have scores, highlights with Roger Tribal. We're going to look back at Memphis State's stunning upset of Southern California in Los Angeles last Monday. And we're going to hear from Dave Perry, the supervisor of officials in the Big Ten, regarding that controversial taunting call near the end of the East Carolina-Illinois game. All coming up at halftime. Third down. Leggett, the lone running back. Skurbeck to Van Dyne for the first down. The control receiver takes it out of bounds at the Boston College 36-yard line with a minute 50 to go. You can't emphasize enough how important your running backs are to pass protection in picking up linebackers. That time, the fullback stepped right over there, picked the dogging linebacker, held his ground, allowed the quarterback to throw the ball. With the linebacker dogging, there's no one underneath the pattern. It's a clean throwing lane. Powers back in as the running back. Gerbeck drops screen. the screen to Powers, and he bobbles it going out of bounds incomplete. It'll be second and ten. One of the numbers working against Michigan right now is the fact that they use two timeouts early on in right. this half. There's a minute 44 to go. They are down to their last timeout. They trail it by three points, and with the hash marks being left where they were and the goalposts narrowed, they aren't close to being in a field goal range down here either. Now Leggett and Powers, the tandem. Van Dyne's in motion. Gerbeck off a of fake. Plenty of time. Intercepted at the 20-yard line. Picked off by Brennan. Charlie Brennan. go too deep they go too deep the corners stay out and the safety will be sitting back to the left side of your screen the play action fake now watch the safety is just sitting back there on the crossing pattern now watch him come up there he is sitting right there <laughs> he didn't see him charlie brennan out of bloomfield hills michigan one of several players from Brother Rice playing here at Boston College, and he has just picked off Elvis Gerbeck. Brennan's brother was a wide receiver here now, and a personal foul against Michigan adds 15 yards. There are the young men on both teams out of Brother Rice. Foley completed a diving catch by Kubayama. We watched, them go through, the freshman. we watched them go through their two-minute drill on the practice field the other day. They really worked it, really drilled it, and they, they chewed some rear ends and some players for not doing it right, so I think they'll probably be pretty efficient with it today. Not sitting on it in the final minute and 17. And Sherma short of the first down. They're going to wish they had those uh, two timeouts. They have one left. Boston College has two. Toss, that's right. Excuse me, Brent. There's a penalty flag down. Back here at the 48-yard line, penalty marker being thrown, and perhaps it is a holding call against Boston College. It's 
see if they can just move that ball and get that first down. The clock stops as they move the chains. Holding offense 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Second down. Now up by three with a minute to go. Second down and 20. Let's see what Coughlin and BC comes up with. They lost 13 yards because the penalty was assessed from the spot of the holding. That's, That's a little illegal procedure. There. You notice they said 10 yards from the spot of the foul, offensive foul holding. That is a new rule this year. If it was five yards behind the line of scrimmage, it would end up being a 15-yard penalty. They're trying to cut down ball. on the obvious Full holding start. going on in college Offense. football. Still second down. And you know what they say, Brent? If that doesn't work, they're going to make it a 15-yard penalty next year. A few more yards tacked on now. It's going to be second and 27 after that latest infraction by BC. Inside handoff. Coughlin trying to spring Jason Swepson, number 24. That's his first carry of the game. He might be content at this opportunity just to try to keep the ball out of Michigan's hands. Moeller trying to use his last timeout, and the clock has stopped with 30 seconds to go. Well, see, he has him down there on the other side of that 50. He'd like to get the ball back and maybe take a, a shot at getting the ball from the field goal position. Well, we've got another good one coming your way. A Monday night football, Dallas and Washington. I'm Frank Gifford. Monday night from Texas. With Dick Vermeil, I'm Brett Musburger. 30 seconds remaining in the first half, and the Boston College Eagles have turned themselves in quite a first half against Gary Moeller and the Wolverines of Michigan. They lead it 10-7. A little bit of an overview here as we get headed for halftime. Well, the mental edge has been in favor of Boston, and they have taken advantage of that edge and it converted into physical performance. They're playing much harder and much better than they did last week. Mike Jovanovich. Mike, you know better than that. You were talking about that mental edge, and uh, <laughs> you'll see him to the left side of your screen. See him make that step. You did it, Joe. He had two starts last year. Mike Jovanovich did. Oh, excuse me. He had uh, he's been a starter for the last two years. I misread that, Brent. On a cut back, and the Michigan unable to stop the clock now. And Boston College very content to take a 10-7 lead in. I want you to listen to this crowd as they go off the field. Should be an interesting locker room on the Michigan side. <laughs> They'll just play a couple of old Bull Schimbeckler tapes, <laughs> pound the table a few times, and say, let's go get them, men. I think Gary Moore's tape will be adequate. <laughs> <laughs> Boston College leading Michigan 10-7. We'll go to Roger Twival in a moment. Back for the second half with Boston College leading favored Michigan 10-7. And... Uh, Dick, what do you expect out of Michigan as we take a look at the numbers from the first half? Well, the numbers are very even, Brent, as we look at this, but you'll see that penalties, uh, I think, really are, were the difference. It, Michigan had two more penalties, just two more, which doesn't seem many, but they intercepted on that first scoring drive the ball that would have prevented the touchdown, but there was an offside penalty that allowed the drive to keep going. And, of course... That offside was so critical after Dotton intercepted the ball. Then Boston College whips it in, and now they'll kick it off to start the second half. Boston College defensive coordinator Steve Sabo said he's really concerned about Michigan forcing them to balance the defense by going to two tight ends so they can't overshift the defense. I would be surprised if Michigan doesn't use that as part of their attack here in the second half. Two of the more dangerous return men, Alexander. 
Howard. Set to bring this one back. And he's going to take the second half kickoff back for a touchdown. Wolverines. Real fine execution of a kickoff return. He hits the lane. He gets the kick out blocks the kick inside block see those split right there now remember this young man led the big 10 at kickoff returns last year at 29.6 now look at him go great speed last week boston did not look good in the covering of punts or kickoffs it was glaring on that one five nine 176 pounds out of cleveland a 93 yard touchdown return carlson has just tied the sheet 76 straight extra points that equals the Michigan record last year he returned 195 yards for a touchdown against Michigan State and here he is bringing one back for just a little over a 90 not easy to return a kickoff for a touchdown you have to have everybody else up in front of you doing a good job here it is again, taking another look. Now, see, he goes directly upfield. Now, you see the right side of your screen. See that wall right there? Kick out, kick out. Now they seal him. Now it's just he and the safety. Look at that speed move. Poor tackling by the safety and kicker. <laughs> Here it is. He takes it on in. I don't know what it is in college, Brent, but you see a kickoff return for a touchdown every 263 returns in the NFL. I don't know what it is in college, but uh, you don't see many. That's the first in five returns that we've had today. <laughs> I can only tell you about this game. Yeah. Albertson had the ball blow off the tee, and he'll kick it off. And you better believe now that the Wolverine defense will be breathing a little fire. You bet. And you know, that kind of a return does more than just put points on the board. It lifts a team up emotionally, and it takes a little wind out of the team that came out all pumped up and was leading at half. Bobbled at the 15-yard line, and Boston College will put it in play at the 23 as Scott Murphy gets it there and now let's watch the emotion on that defensive side of the ball as the Wolverines come out with their first lead of the new season favored by 24 they were down by 10 went in at the intermission trailing by three and then Howard exploded taking the kickoff all the way Chucky Dukes the running back cannon in motion Chimura changes over to the left side Two tight ends. Dukes running behind the right side out to the 24. You see, again, they use the formation where they load the big two tackles, two offensive tackles, to one side and unbalance the line and bring the tight end the other way and try to run behind those two big 270-pounders. See what kind of a second half Michigan gets from its secondary. Dotton, remember, the lone experienced hand back there. He's the team leader in that secondary. And Foley's going to throw against it. High and incomplete. He wanted Mitchell. It was well covered by Ware on that far side. What he has to do, as you see him looking across at the signals, what he has to do is look at the defense with a pre-snap look. Decide where it is best to go with the football as designed by that pattern and get it there. That time, he should have come over here to the slot side of the formation rather than trying to force it over the top of somebody to the right. Eric Anderson passes along the defensive call. He's number 37. He's led this defense in tackles for three straight years out of Glenview, Illinois, on third down. Foley is oh, in. Wow. What a hit to it over there by Brown. It's a different Michigan team here, folks. Holy mackerel. 
Well, maybe that first half was their first game and they got it going again, but you'll see here, drop back pass, and Foley would rather throw a drop back pass, he told me, because he can see. Now watch this. Brown, look at him go up there and smack. Boy, does that hurt. Woo. And nice hit awaits by Brown. The return on the punt. The Magic Man. That's a return type ball if they'll get up there and feel it. So Desmond Howard's going to let it bounce. It was actually yeah. too short. Too short. Couldn't feel it. Takes a BC bounce inside Michigan's 30 yard line. And when we come back, it'll be the Wolverines ball, first and 10. Michigan 14, Boston College 10. Nittany Lions head west to tackle the Trojans of Southern Cal. It's a primetime special next Saturday on ABC Sports. Well, let's talk about that Wolverine offensive line now. Steve Everett is the center. Matt Elliott and Joe Cocoso are the guards. Greg Skrepkanak and Rob Doherty are the tackles. I'll get it right, Greg. Don't get mad at me. There he is. You wouldn't want him mad at you. He just sit on you. <laughs> There's been confusion about how to pronounce his last name. He changed it before the season, and uh, no one's quite sure yet exactly uh, what to call him. He needs a good nickname. I wish those writers back in Michigan to come up with a good one for old Scrap Iron and give him some tag. Number 75 now. Let's see if Powers saddles up behind yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Penalty markers come flying. If you notice in watching that, the defense jumped to change the defensive front, and then the nose guard Good jumped ball. forward and hit Offside the center. defense, illegal contact. John Stolberg was just a little too anxious, and he so far has been the guy that has helped Tom Coughlin set the new tempo for the new program. Here he is right here. Skripanak is on the left side. They're going to run that way. Powers on a cutback into the middle and Powers out to the 42. Let's go down and meet Greg Skrepanek's father. He's with Cheryl Miller. Cheryl? Well, first of all, we want to make sure, is it Skrepanek or is it Skrepanek? How exactly do you, spell, do you say your last name? Skrepanek. Anyway, you say Greg is fine. <laughs> with me is Greg Sr. And you can set, you can obviously see where Greg gets his size from. Now, you were telling me earlier that you think this is going to be your son's best season. He's coming in 10 pounds lighter, and he's much more focused. Right. He has uh, really dedicated himself to this year. The offseason, he did a lot of running, a lot of weightlifting. And as you can see, he's watching what he eats. So he <laughs> has something to prove, and he wants to make it this year. It's obvious that he has the size to play in the NFL. What do you feel he needs to work on in order to make the next step to the next level? I think he has to be a little more aggressive. That's about the only downfall I could see. And maybe keep up a little more on the foot speed. All right, Greg, thank you very much. And Brent, you know, Greg Jr., when he was born, weighed 10 pounds and was 23 inches long. That's a big bundle of joy. wonder what he looked like when he was a young man. There he is. That's when he was a year old. <laughs> <laughs> and that's today, folks. A lot of man on the left side of the offensive line. Let's give Diebold credit for recovering that fumble. Powers now out of the game. Wheatley is in at tailback. He's to the 40-yard line where it will be second down and long. I, I still think that Michigan has got to force Boston College defense to balance up. They're lining overshifted, and then the Michigan's running right into the overshift. Either that or get outside of it or come with play action passing. Michigan going without a huddle as they did most of last season, but it's not really a hurry up offense. They still take their normal time. Get the play called. Howard is to Gerbeck's right. Gerbeck has time and Wheatley can hold on. <laughs> In reading his uh, freshman bio, it doesn't say much about his reading skills, but I mean, uh, receiving skills, but he does everything else. He wants to be an Olympic sprinter and is supposedly has the kind of speed that he may be able to qualify for it someday. Now 
third down for the Wolverines, leading Boston College, 14-10. We saw those flashy high school stats, but I didn't see what he did on the relay, if he could hold on to the baton every time. <laughs> Gerbeck, back now, getting good time for the line, gonna go for the home run to Howard, who's tripped at the five. I think he caused it himself. I think yeah. he ran into Camara and was yeah. tripped accidentally. Yeah. Let's it's just look incidental contact here. He's going to the post right under, underneath Camara, number five. You see he's in good position. The ball's thrown right there. He moves over in front, and he runs up the back of the defender. That's good defensive position all the way. You see they're going for six. They're not going for the first down on a throw like that. Chris Stapleton lost that punting job at Michigan. Into punt one, and it'll go out of bounds at the 21 yard line, just inside the 22 over there on the far side. Boston College first down, trailing by four when we come back. Grenet. This is the school that Doug Flutie built. Now, <laughs> he just added a lot of money, folks. It generated an extra $9 million for Boston College while he was in his Heisman Trophy career up here. The school in Newton, and the field is in Boston. Now, first down for Foley. Quick pop oh. complete. Chamorro was not... Somebody didn't read right on it. He wasn't even looking back at the quarterback as he came off the line that time. It'll be second and ten. He did not take a look, as you said, Brent. Misunderstanding from the get-go right there. Dwight Shirley in as a running back, and Womack is out. Do you recognize any similarities between the Boston College offense and the New York Giants offense? Short passing game, play action. And only 10 points. <laughs> Second down and 10. Here's a handoff to Big Shirley. Makes his way to the 28-yard line. Yeah, the Giants made more out of 10 and 17 points than any team in the NFL in a long time. <laughs> yes, they did. It's a lot of money, a lot of dollars per point, right? Chamorro reminds me a little bit of Mark Bavaro, though, when I watched Boston College. Yeah, uh, maybe as a receiver, not a blocker. Bavaro, I think, a more physical at the point blocker. Chamorro over on the left side. This is a third and four. Foley fires short of the Didn't first down. An excellent defensive play. And Anderson, the ringleader of that defense, gets it done. See, they ran a, a option pattern for the running back. He just went out and read the linebacker and hooked up accordingly, trying to get to the first down. You call that as a coach for the specific reason to get the first down. Now, Green, here he is, a red shirt freshman playing in there, makes a red shirt freshman mistake. He misses it by a yard. Howard electrified this crowd with a 93-yard kickoff return. Perhaps stunned is a better verb here at Boston College. Going to field this punt at the 35 and down where Michigan will put it in play right there. Elvis Gerbeck and the Wolverines go back to work. And again, this is the start of a very tough schedule from Michigan. They look up next week. They'll be in Ann Arbor against Notre Dame. Then the following week, Florida State comes in. Then they'll take the week off. And then they will open up in the Big Ten back-to-back -back against the two teams they lost to by a point apiece. Iowa and Michigan State. So it is a rough road here for Coach Moeller. And you know, darn near is tough for Coach Coughlin at Boston College. His schedule's tough. Alexander now goes into the slot, and Gerbeck changing up. Gets Leggett directly behind him. They go to that eight-man front. Powers. Do you see what they did, Brent, then? They shifted late to an eight-man front. That, again, that was the Buddy Ryan 46 defense. They shifted to it late, and they ran right into the strength of that defense. There are just too many defenders over there to block offensively. No gain. So you mentioned Boston College. This is why they wanted to win that Rutgers game so badly. Coming up, Michigan, then Georgia Tech. Then they go to it at Penn State. That's no picnic. They scheduled Louisville about 10 years ago, thinking they'd be a patty cake, and then the Howard Schnellenberger winds up down there. And that's no walk in the park. So it's tough for Coughlin. Powers bounces. Good defense. Oh, you bet. 
Boy, I'll tell you, Steve Sabo, defensive coordinator for Boston College, has to be really pleased along with the rest of that defensive staff. Randy Edsel and Bill Thompson and, and Dan Rocco have really done a good job of preparing this defense against that physical front. Powers is out. They load up with an extra wide receiver. So it's third and eight. And Gerbeck brings Howard in motion behind him. And throws to Alexander, who is out of bounds at the Boston College 48-yard line. First down, Wolverines. They were in a man-to-man -man coverage. You had them spread all the way across the field. Straight drop back pass. You'll see the safety moving with the motion back. He gets back. He sets up nicely. He throws the deep out. Good protection. Tackles do a good job of walling the rush to the outside. You can't play him any tighter than that with that kind of speed out there at the receiver position. First and ten. Gerbeck complete to the 40-yard line. Howard. You know what he did then? He saw the 46 defense. He audibled out of the run and threw a quick slant. Good adjustment by Gerbeck. It's really tough to run the football, no matter how physical you are, when they have more people than you have in the area you're running. The only thing you get out of it many times is a cutback. Now it's second and short. Powers bounces outside, and he's short of that first down. And that time it was Danny Kerr, number 91. You'll see what I mean here now. They've got, they're going to come off the ball straight. They're coming off now. Now he's going to have to come backside. Now watch him come backside. The defense has not over-pursued. Good penetration there, or actually good discipline by Kerr, number 91. Talk the uh. Now on third down, Powers, and he's sealed up. Big loss, and Ian Kerr was the ringleader along with Boyd. <laughs> now as Kona comes in to punt again for Michigan, Boston defense was slanting strong in the direction of the run, and all linemen were coming on the snap in the direction of the handoff. Hard to get outside. That was an impressive defensive stand by Boston College. Kubiyama is going to let this one roll down. It could be down inside the five. It is. Uh, did he go in the end zone? I think he did, Brent. Let's see what he rules. Oh, no. Oh, hey. One inch line. I thought he rolled into the end zone at the end. Must have rolled him down prior to rolling in. So they'll spot the ball right there. And Lance Dotton is the Wolverine player who downed it. We'll be right back. The end zone. I'd give the official the correct call on this, Brent. It's close. You'll see Dotton, number 22, come in. Remember now, he has to get it down before it goes in the end zone. There's Neeser down, he has control of the ball, and it looks like it's starting to come out of his body, but he still had it up against his body. I, I think the official made the right call. Already down with his knees. And Foley. Let's see, the last time we had a situation like this down <laughs> in Arkansas, Miami went 99 yards. Shirley stood up in the middle, and Eric Anderson, number 37, was there. Brent, I really believe there is better intensity by the Michigan defense now, not just so much because of that one play, but because each snap defensively is second half. You'll see it's a fullback slant play. Get pretty good block. He starts to cut back in the bubble. Now here comes the linebackers ricocheting off their blocks, and they give him a good stop right there. Eric Anderson, number 37. You can see why he was all Big Ten and an All-American candidate this year. Think they'll put it up here? I think I would. I wouldn't wait to third down, I'll tell you that. That's what he's going to do. Incomplete, and there was a misread on that. Kubiyama cut in, and the ball was thrown out. Yeah. Kubiyama, you mentioned he's an interesting guy. A freshman, a true freshman from Hawaii. From the, <laughs> you'd have to, 
question him uh, intelligence-wise a little bit about thinking of leaving Hawaii to come all the way to the East Coast. But I get, you know, he is a bright guy, too. It's a nice city to go to school. I know it is, but to Hawaii? Nice to the food. East Coast? Good food, good and restaurant. Go back for Christmas. Yeah. Huh? You get a little sunshine in the off-season. He turned down Stanford, so he's a bright student. He just wanted to come here. Chucky Duke's the best. There's a hole. They close in inside the five-yard line. Michigan's going to have very good field position. They force the punt. See, what he did, though, that didn't look like much of a play, but he did give the punter room to get in full spread punt formation now and get it out of there. Desmond Howard will be looking to haul this one back. And there's where Kushner is standing. If he steps out, remember, that's a safety. Woo! Almost blocked. It's going to be short and out of bounds. Boy, he had that the penetration. going to mark that. You said good field position. <laughs> you are right. That's a short field. And they're now playing on a 30-yard field. And another official, one of the liaison men, has been shaken up on the play. He's being tended to here on the near side. As the Wolverine offense gets ready to come in. Howard has scored both their touchdowns today for the Wolverines. He caught a touchdown pass early in the second quarter. And then he exploded for a touchdown run on the second half kickoff. A year ago, 11 touchdowns. Hit 19 yards on that touchdown pass from Gerbeck. And now the Wolverines with 30 yards to maneuver. And Howard, the first player in Michigan history to have scored two touchdowns returning kickoffs. Thinks he's Rocket Ishmael. <laughs> Well, tonight, ABC will take you down under and out west. First, meet the real Crocodile Dundee on a world discovery special, Crocodile's Revenge. Then a Young Riders movie special, all starting tonight at 8, 7 Central on ABC. Now we go to Cheryl Miller. Cheryl? Thanks, Brent. With me is the uh, the cheerleading coach for the Newton North High School cheerleaders. Now, they stepped in because the cheer the regular cheerleaders for the Michigan weren't allowed to come here. They can only attend one non-conference game. And you girls stepped in. You turned in your black and orange uniforms for the maize and blue. I would think since the high school is only five miles away from B.C. that you caught a lot of flack for this. Yeah, we're not welcome here today, that's for sure. Uh, we're catching a lot today. But, um, I don't know, Michigan asked us for support today, and we're just here to give it to them. What was the most difficult part of getting ready for today's game? The time. We didn't have much time at all to prepare. So, um, And also, we're used to having a 16-girl squad, and we had to cut it down to only 10. So they're trying to work it out with what they have. All right, thanks a lot, Sandra. And Brent and Dick, it's not easy trying to substitute the word Wolverines for Tigers. They've had a difficult time trying to memorize Hail to the Victors. Rent a cheer. There we are. Okay, you know, Joe DiNucci, a running back over on Boston College, he played high school at Newton. He had to call up a couple of the... The young Shirley said, well, you're my friends. You can't, what, what's going on here? <laughs> Plus, Michigan goes home. He doesn't. He stays here. Yeah. <laughs> well, Boston College took a 10-point lead in the first quarter of this game. Michigan scored early in the second quarter. Keith Miller and Sean Wright made it 10-0. Then it was the magic show. First, a 19-yard touchdown catch. That was the score at halftime. Then the second half kickoff. 93 yards for the touchdown. We stand 14-10 right now. Michigan's ball first and 10 at the BC 30-yard line. And we get an update that Jimmy Connors was beaten today in straight sets, 3-3 three, three, and 2. So those of you who watched the tennis final, I guess everything was straight today. Edberg in straight. Sellis, the women's winner. Not Courier. And here it's been Boston College until early in the second half. And now Michigan with a chance to do some business. Leading by four and great field position here. Gerback, good ah. defense. You see what they did that time, Brent? They lined up.
Buddy Ryan defense showed that, got him to audible, then jumped out of the but the 46 defense and played a regular coverage. Jay McGillis, number 31, with a fine defensive play. There's our star. Heisman Trophy candidate blooming here at Boston College. They're back into the 46. Now he's trying to audible. He could get the ball deep here. He overthrew Alexander. You know, he overthrew him, but many times when a quarterback overthrows the ball, a defender gets just enough penetration, gets his hands up, and forces him to throw it a little bit higher. And I think that's what happened. You'll see Skreptic number 75 blocking over here. They have a stun he's picking up on there right now. Now you see number 90 get his hand up there. And many times that's all you need to do to force that quarterback to throw the ball a little bit higher than he'd like to. Third and 10 for the Wolverines. Michigan 14, Boston College 10. It's been a dandy. Van Dyne's the motion man. Come on. Oh, Boston College recovers. Stephen Boyd, number 50, pounced on the loose ball. And Mike Marinero stripped it. This is the one thing that Coach Gary Moore said we don't want to do. We don't want to turn it over. Good pass rush out of four people. He gets back in there. They get a good push up field. He's forced to go back up inside. He's got the ball tucked under right there. And then, as you saw, the defender came around and flipped it out from the backside. Good job by Mike Marinero, number 62. Adam Womack, the lone setback behind Steve Foley, who will throw on first down to Chamura. Oh, what a great catch that was by Chamura. You're turning back completely around. Now, you said that was a great catch. You know, that was equally a fine throw. As you'll see, he'll work around the inside linebacker, Morrison. Now, watch him work around Morrison, number 36. Now, here comes the ball, right where it has to be. Perfect. Well done. Well executed. 19 yards and a first down for PC. David Green, the running back, as Coach Coughlin continues to shuttle running backs in and out. Unbalanced line again. Foley for the home run. Yeah. Incomplete. And Dotton had the wide receiver cannon covered. See, now that's the first time they've gotten in the unbalanced line and thrown the ball. They've been running out of it all the time. The first time they jumped into it, tried to get him to play run. The only thing is, they, I think they probably have been better off using a play action pass. Glenn Foley is 6'2. Weighs 185 pounds. As a freshman here at BC, he threw for 2,189 yards a year ago. That eclipsed Doug Flutie's freshman record. But he did fire 21 interceptions. And a penalty flag comes down. Tony Henderson, number 79. Tony is the backup nose guard. Good ball, offside, defense, contact on the center. He just came in there for Buster Stanley. There's Big Screpin up to the left side of your screen. Bernie Leggett. Lined up like they might be coming after him. Shirley, the running back, gets the call. They were. Short of midfield, and it will be third and about four. It's a good job of linebacking here. They were bringing the linebackers. They tightened everybody up to play man-to-man, -man. and you'll see the right side of your screen, number 36, Morrison. See him come up inside and penetrate. He was coming all the way. 36 and 37 are the two inside linebackers for Coach Moeller. And they're a good pair. They really are. Steve Morrison is just a sophomore out of Birmingham. Michigan Brother Rice High School, Brent, but uh, he has been consistent in there today, playing real well. Foley uses a timeout. He didn't like what he was looking at defensively. And there are only five seconds left. So he uses up a timeout. And we'll remind everybody that next Saturday, ABC's College Football brings you live doubleheader action. 3.30 Eastern.
Dick, you and I will be in Ann Arbor for the Notre Dame Michigan game. Always one of the classics. Then it will be Keith Jackson and Bob Greasy out of the Memorial Coliseum USC against Penn State <laughs> Penn State at 81 nothing winner and USC coming off a loss to Memphis State you know I don't know if I were a coach I'd show that film to anybody <laughs> it might scare them. Michigan 14 Boston College 10 we're in the third quarter here alumni stadium <laughs> penalties in the first half were the difference, especially an offside call against Michigan, which nullified an interception, and then Boston College scored its lone touchdown of this game. They made it 10 nothing, and since then, the Wolverines have been on the comeback trail, but it has not been easy. This has been a game bunch of Boston College Eagle players who were beaten by Rutgers last week. And a very good offensive game plan design. Foley. He's got room. First down. Brent, they locked on man-to-man, -man, covering all receivers man-to-man. -man. Of course, no one man-to-man on the quarterback. He gets back, correction breaks down, he sees the gap, off he goes, no one to take him. They have to come off coverage to make the tackle. Here he is, straight drop back now. See, he has pretty good protection initially, and it collapses right there. Now he's forced to go ahead. Here he comes up inside. They had the patterns covered downfield tightly with man-to-man -man coverage. Three offensive players substitute. An eight-yard run for Foley, and on a first and ten, he'll put it up. He has time, wide open is Cannon. Knocked out of bounds by Williams on the far side. It's another BC first down. Again, just drop back pass what Foley likes to do. He wants to set up five steps and let it go. They get a corner pattern behind an out pattern. You'll see the left, the short pattern. Here's the corner pattern right there. See, and he pumped it there. They thought they were going to Chamura. He wasn't going to Chamura. He went in behind and went deep. Adam Womack, the running back. First and 10 at the Michigan 21-yard line. Foley deflected, intercepted on a diving catch at the four-yard line by Eric Anderson. What happened on that, Chamura went down the scene, thought he read double zone, raised his hand, giving the quarterback the, scene, the signal, hey, throw it to me down the hole. He let it go. See, Kamara, he puts his hand up down there. His hand has already been brought down by that time. And the safeties collapsed on him. The linebacker, it was batted, and the linebacker, Eric Anderson, goes ahead. Now, you see him coming down the hole. There's Anderson. It's batted right there. Now, watch Eric Anderson. Here he comes. Well-coached linebacker. Linebacker coaches teach linebackers to keep coming after those batted balls. And it was Morrison who batted it. Anderson who intercepted it. Gerbeck with a first down for Michigan. Oh. He's hit in the end zone and the ball's loose. Let's see where he was recovered by Boston College as Mike Marinero. What an opportunity that was for a fraction of a second. Marinero got in there cleanly coming from his defensive tackle position. Did a nice job, obviously. His brother's on the bench for Michigan on the other side, a freshman offensive lineman. Now second down and long. Leggett out to the three-yard line where McManus ramps him up. Third down coming up for Michigan. Now, here's the interception again. Here's Eric Anderson diving for the football in the middle of your screen. Now, he's going for it right there. Ooh, he might have trapped that interception. That might be a trap. No instant replay in, in NCAA football. Third down and 11 for the Wolverines. Three wide receivers. off and Leggett gets to the five. Michigan is forced to punt as McManus wraps him up. You know, Skrepnik did a real fine job of blocking that point of attack, but he didn't get help from the blocks inside him and they didn't get the room. But he had Stone really taken off the ball. 
You'll see right here, just watch this block. He does a good job on his draw block. He sets him, now watch him take him, just power him off the ball, but it broke down inside, see? No matter how good a job you do, everybody else has to help out. Rotating punters as Stapleton is back. Kubiyama standing out near midfield. Boston College Ooh, nice punt. should have good field position, though, at the 49, 45. Down at the 40-yard line, it'll be first down for the Eagles. They trail it by four. That's the time to evaluate your punter. How does he punt coming out of the end zone? Give that young man an A. He did a nice job of getting that one out of there. Notre Dame next week playing Michigan. And regardless of what happens here, the Wolverines are in for a tough week of practice as Darnell Campbell checks in as the running back for Boston College. He'll get the call. Into the middle of the defense for two or three yards. I can't say enough nice things about Darnell Campbell in regard to watching him run today in contrast to watching him run last week. He's just a more confident guy, better understanding, and much more aggressive with the ball in his hand. Womack and Green will be the running backs on second down and seven. See, what do you do? Do I blitz as a defensive coach and worry about the one-on-one -on -one coverage, or do I go ahead and play zone and give him the underneath? I think I'd play him some tight and get after him. Now, Danucci came in very late into this formation. Everybody out. Incomplete. Shamara doesn't hold on at the 30. He would have had a first down. Anderson dropping back into pass defense with Morrison. What Foley has to realize is when they're a linebacker on each side of his tight end at that tight, then there's areas on outside him that the other receivers are open. He's, he's got to go ahead and work away from him. Kubiyama brings the play in from the sideline. This will be a third and seven for Boston College. They trail Michigan by four. They were a 24-point underdog. Foley rolling to his left. Buys time. First down, Boston College. Keith Miller. I tell you, I'm excited for Keith Miller because I, I don't think I've heard a wide receiver chewed out so many times on the practice field as a low time. Now, this is a, de a planned, delayed sprint out. See him straight back, draw the rush upfield, now get the hook blocks, come outside. He's throwing an out pattern to the man who was in the slot right on the money, and to the young man I was talking to, and the other day he dropped three in a row, and I thought Kaufman, the head coach, was going to have a heart attack. Today he caught three for 52, and Boston College's touchdown. Here it's Foley again on first and 10. Ah, oh, I dropped it. Incomplete. Just got the ball in front of Michael Campbell. Michael Campbell, a redshirt freshman, did not play in 90, so he's playing his first football game in a pressure time. But you got to make those plays. This is what Coach Coffin was saying the other day. You have to make it happen. People, your opponents, won't give it to you. Now Dwight Shirley in at running back. Every time he has come in the game, he's carried the ball. He has not blocked or come out as a pass receiver yet. Second and ten, and here he is. Right up the middle. He breaks free. That's why he carries the ball every time. <laughs> they had him spread out. Tackles went outside. Ran just a base handoff plate, and he broke it back for a big one. We've had one huge upset this year. Memphis State over USC. Now Boston College is trying to offer a second. We'll come right back. You'll see that the Boston College offense caught him in a defensive wide charge. He goes out. He goes out. Now Eric's supposed to come in and field. He's picked off by the center. Here comes the other linebacker, and he slips and falls in the hole. You'll see what I'm talking about. You'll watch Steve Morrison, number 36, see him come back inside. He slips and falls in the hole. Great big hole there. And Those as linebackers result, have to fill that. As a result, we start the fourth quarter, first and goal at the Michigan nine-yard line. Boston College down by four. Foley in a diving catch at the five-yard line incomplete. He was juggling the ball as he hit the carpet. Dotton had the coverage on Kubiyama incomplete. Just a quick three-step drop. He's going to try to lay the straight pattern to the sideline. Now, see him now. He's going to fire it right out there to the flat. He wanted to go to the post inside it. It looked like at that angle he caught the ball. Obviously, the official right in position saw what happened. 
Shirley returns. Second down and goal. Two tight ends, Chamura and Mitchell. Two wide receivers to the right of Foley. And here's Shirley into the middle. A bone crunching run to the five. And it'll be third and goal from the five yard line. See, if the situation changes at 10 to 14, you're down by four. You need not, I don't think you're thinking about four downs for the first down, Brent, in terms of your field goal decision or scoring a touchdown effort. Yeah, can't get a first down. It's third and goal. Womack and Green are the running backs, and they've got a tough five yards to go. The decision Coughlin's going to make will depend on where they get it here on third down. Womack is split to the right. They're going to throw on third and goal over the middle. Incomplete. Well covered that time by Brown and Dotton. They wanted to go to a, to a tight end corner pattern to Chimera with the motion man coming in, shortening the defense. They covered him, so he had to go to the crossing man. Didn't have a chance. Good defense that time by Michigan. So Sean Wright, the left-footed, the barefooted left-footed kicker, trots onto the field, and he will be trying this one from near the left hash mark. Brett, I think it's a little bit of an advantage, even though it's further offset than normal, to be left-footed in this situation and hooking it to your right for the goalpost kick. So Bill Shaughnessy will put it down to 22-yard field goal attempt. And Boston College pulls to within a point. It's Michigan 14, Boston College 13, 14 minutes and seven seconds to go here in the fourth and final quarter. We'll be right back. NFC East rivals collide. The Washington Redskins rumble into Dallas for a showdown with the Cowboys this week on ABC's Monday Night Football. 14-13, uh, who would you kick it to here? I wouldn't kick it, Brent. I think I'd squib it. I'd give up a little uh, in terms of distance to the kick. I'd roll it back in there around that 20-yard line and let it bounce around. I don't think I'd take a chance in kicking it to either one of those guys back there. Let's see what Beckley does here. Turned the second half kickoff for a Michigan touchdown. He's back deep with Alexander. He's kicking it up. And this one will be Alexander from the 14. Coming to the right side. Looking for an alley. He's down Good at tackle. the 30 yard line. Brent, you've been around Boston College. When was the last time you broadcast a Boston College game? I've never done one. It was 1984. It was in the Orange Bowl. We see a Michigan player shaken up. It was the day after Thanksgiving. And Derek Alexander, before we get into that, Derek Alexander was shaken up. Here he is trying to cut back. The shorter number six trips him up right there. It pulls him down. I think he wrenched his knee slightly there. You know, when your foot is not implanted in the turf and contact in midsection of the knee, see that both feet up right there, I would question if it's a serious injury. In my experience of looking at tapes and films over the years. You were asking me, while well, the young man's being tended to, the last time I did Boston College was 1984. It was the day after Thanksgiving. It was Bernie Kosar was quarterbacking Miami. Doug Flutie was quarterbacking Boston College. It was a great game, and then it came down to the last couple of seconds, and it became a historic game when Flutie fired this one into the end zone. I watched Gerard Phelan make the catch in the end zone, the miracle catch, 47-45. <laughs> it was an unbelievable game, and of course that year, Flutie went on to win the Heisman Trophy. And that era generated an extra $9 million for Boston College. His applications also increased 20%. And when the team was invited to the Cotton Bowl that year, the bookstore did $1 million in business in one month up here. Sounds like football made a contribution. Here's Ricky Powers. 
Because that's all Michigan fans want to hear from me, right? <laughs> I show up and get another Boston College miracle. <laughs> they will let me into my favorite ballpark. I know. Right? Jack McNell was coaching then, right? Yeah, uh, Cowboy Jack. I hope he's watching us up in Maine. He's probably pulling hard for Boston College. He's Alexander being tended to on the Michigan sideline. Michigan has some fine trainers headed up by Paul Schmidt. So here's Gerbeck on second down off a play fake. Did not fool the defense incomplete. They're going to call intentional ground. Stone was all over him. Ron Stone, as you said, they're going to call intentional grounding. You'll see the action coming right at us. See, fakes there. Now watch him come right at us here. He wanted to get outside. He wanted to fool Stone. Come out there and force Stone to go and play action side. He didn't do it. Good discipline by Ron Stone, the junior from Dorchester, Massachusetts. Yeah, he asked me about Cowboy Jack. He has a son, Bob Central McNell. Grounding. Offense. Walks it down. Third down. Boy, that's take one more look at it you'll see what i mean there's stone right there he had no choice now he's going to unload the ball right there the official had no choice but to call that intentional grounding i was mentioning bob bicknell he's not playing today because he's injured and won't play this year for boston college so it is third down and 23 for gerbeck and michigan they'll hand to powers powers weaves his way out to the 27 yard line powers has that great leg action they're all his feet are always off the ground when you hit him you've got to wrap your arms around him now just watch the action the leg action is fine young running back watch the feet watch the feet get up in the air he never had see him get him up now watch him work those feet coming back up in there he's always got a moving in position to make a cut and to pull out of tackles as Kona punting this time for the Wolverines, they lead Boston College by a point. 12.45 to go. And he drives Kubiyama back to the 21-yard line. The freshman finds a hole. He's out to the 32. It'll be first down for Boston College. 12 and a half minutes to go. Michigan leading, but only by a point. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame take on number two Michigan in a college football classic next Saturday on ABC Sports. Michigan 14, Boston College with the ball and trailing by a point. And you can't say enough about the coaching job that's been turned in on that BC sideline today by Tom Coughlin, who left the New York Giants staff to come here to Boston College. You know, we talked about Doug Flutie. He was the offensive coordinator here for the Eagles during the early part of the Flutie era. Now he has come back as the head coach. His team trailing it by a point. His sophomore quarterback, Foley, down the middle. He overthrows everybody. Kubiyama was the intended receiver. Michigan has changed up their defensive scheme to rushing four down people and then playing coverage behind it rather than rushing the three down linemen. They're playing them to throw the football in a nickel defense situation. Dukes is in as the running back. Miller and Cannon are the wide receivers. Shimura, the tight end. This is Dukes. Ooh, nice. Battles his way to the 35-yard line. It'll be around third and eight. That's Martin Davis spotted. did a nice job there. Really good job of playing. He was down in a three-point stance in front of the tight end, and he, he belted him and ricocheted off, came in and made a real nice job. Martin was tied with his teammate last year for Big Ten sacks with eight. You can see why he did so well last year in making plays like that. Third and seven for the Eagles. deflected by Morrison good job by Steve Morrison moving inside out zone coverage reading the quarterback's eyes all the way when Glenn Foley turned to throw to his left Morrison just broke on the ball and flipped it away Austin College to punt Bill Kushner 
And the best part of Michigan's game so far today has been this man and his kickoff return to start the second half. Desmond Howard. For a low punt, it'll take a bounce. And Howard waves, got it on the first bounce, and downs it at the 30-yard line. He was thinking about what to do with that first hop, <laughs> either let it go or field it. Did you see him signaling the, the return people coming back to get away, get away? 11 and a half minutes to go. Jammed into this pretty little ballpark here on the campus of Boston College. And a reminder that Monday at 9 Eastern time, got Monday night football coming up. And that's another good one we're going to talk about right after this play. I'm going to ask Dick what he thinks about it. First and ten for the Wolverines. Ricky, there's a cutback. Big hole. Powers on his way to the 35 and out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Monday Night Football will wait. We want to see that. One. <laughs> That's just the eye slant playoff tackle. They got it, and he broke back. Now you'll watch here to the top of your screen. Watch the blocking as they come off the ball. Just man-to-man -man zone. Block. Fullback leads right there, and he cuts back. See, good blocking at the backside. Now he shows his burst of speed. And here comes Joe Camara, number five, to run him out of bounds. Boy, when you have that vision to make those cutbacks, you'll make more yards running back there than you do at the point of attack. That's as big an offensive play as Michigan's had today. Puts the ball down at the Boston College, 36. Wheatley, the freshman, hit and makes his way to the 34-yard line. Well, here, Monday Night Football, I brought it up. Dallas and uh, and Washington. You're 0 for 1. You gave me the 49ers last Monday. What about this one? Well, you'd have to favor Washington going in, but I'll tell you, I did a preseason game this year with Dallas involved in the game, and they're an improved football team. They really were. Emmett Smith ran for over 100 yards the first half. Troy Aikman did a good job, and their down four defensively was improved. It'll be a good football game. So who's going to win? The Redskins. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and seven. Here's Boom. again. Take an end zone look at that great run by Ricky Powers, the sophomore out of Akron. You'll see the value of being able to with the run with vision and cut back on a play like this. Now, see, he stretches the defense to the left of your screen. Now, look at him come back. He has really good wall-off blocks backside by Matt Elliott, number 69, and allowed him to get that cutback lane. Has a brother, Scott, who's a defensive back at Michigan State. Big third down, five yards for Michigan. Lead it by a point. Gerback drops it off to the fullback Leggett. Good call. <laughs> and it's a Wolverine first down at the 22-yard line. You know, Leggett's been blocking his fanny off all day. And here he's caught six passes in his career at Michigan. And here they throw him one in a critical situation. And that is a big play, even though it's only a few yards. He checks out to the right side of your screen. He scrambles over. Now watch him just drop the football. No one covering him right there. They have to rally now and come up and make the play. Right call at the right time. First and ten for the Wolverines. Powers. You know, the inside of the offensive line, Brent, is doing a real good job nine, uh, right now. Steve Everett, the center, 51. Joe Cocoso, the right guard, and Matt Elliott. They're moving people off the ball right now. There's Everett, the center. He was hurt last year for a while, and Elliott, the guard moved over and played center. They've used him at three different positions. He's been a regular and unheralded member of this Michigan offensive line. Powers cutting back down to the 12-yard line. I wonder if the size of the average line there, 291 pounds, gradually wears down into the late minutes of a fourth quarter, the, the younger, less physical defensive line. Look at Skrepnik. I wonder if Good thing he had with a name that long, he needs big shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, he has a hand that will swallow you. It's the biggest hand this side of Johnny Bench, and there it is. Number 75. They're coming after him. Kerbeck. Leggett was tied up, throws back to the middle. A great grab in that situation by the tight end, Dave Diebolt. Very unusual call for third and short. If you're going to run a third and short pass, you would normally run it off play action. Obviously, they thinking if we don't make it, we're going to go for the short yardage on fourth down, but a different, a different approach. 
You'll see here, he was just going straight back. Now he's scrambling out and he throws back across the grain. But you've got to be careful making that kind of a throw in that area because defenders don't have to drop off. McManus was there, so it's a first down for the Wolverines, a first and goal in this sequence. Here's Powers searching for daylight. Good defense. Cut off to the outside and brought down by Pahopic. Jason Pahopic, 46, moved to outside linebacker by the new coaching staff this year, and he's a good player. You know, and he was an inside linebacker in spring practice. He didn't move until now to fill a need, and he's playing well. You know, he was a guy that caught my eye watching the other day. He played well in the ballgame as an outside linebacker last week. Second and goal. I don't think they're thinking field goal either, Brent. I think they're thinking touchdown. A field goal would put them up four. four. That's a lot better than one, however. Throw touchdown and his third touchdown of the day, Desmond Howard. Just a very simple, basic goal line pass. The slot man runs to the sideline. The wide receiver and the slot runs a little short post inside. And you Number five, Joe Kamara. If it was man coverage, he should never be playing quite that far outside. You'll give him that inside lane. That's a gimme when you play it like that. So J.D. Carlson goes for the Michigan record now. If this one's good, he'll break the mark that he shares right now with Ali Haji Sheik. Seventy-seven, and the record belongs to J.D. Carlson, his younger brother may someday inherit his role as the field goal specialist at Michigan. So the Wolverines move ahead 21 to 13 and we'll be right back. So a defensive back Charlie Brennan with a little discussion with the assistant coaches and Elvis Kerbeck with his second touchdown pass of the day to Desmond Howard. It has not been easy here this afternoon for Gerbeck. He and Howard were high school teammates back in the Cleveland area coming to Michigan together and that has been the combination. They've hooked up for two scores and Howard returned the second half touchdown for his third. So he definitely and there's the young man who was shaken up returning the kick a short time ago. The report is that he's okay. 21-13, Michigan the lead and kicking off to Boston College and Danuki, <laughs> hometown boy, brings it to the 30-yard line. Marcus Walker, a young inside linebacker, hit that wedge. Oh, man, what, is, what an effort that young man made. Well, now the focus is on Glenn Foley with the two-point conversion, a touchdown on the two, ties this one up at 21. Boston College has not scored since early in the game. They've stopped themselves with two interceptions on drives going in. They have not scored a touchdown. They've had a field goal here just a short time ago. There's Chamura, their big tight end, out to the 37-yard line. Morrison and Anderson sandwich him there. And Foley shaken up on the play. The backup quarterback is Bill Shaughnessy. He was in two games last year, had no pass attempts. He'll be coming in here. He'll under a lot of pressure. Tom Coughlin there talking to the quarterback. Let's take a look and see if we can see what happened. Fully to the left side of your screen. He's there. He's going down, going down. Got his leg bent under him. Yeah. Might in that situation, you might have stretched a groin. Evans collapsing on him. He was in an awkward position. Yes. When he went down. Yeah, and that's a lot that. of body to collapse on. Yeah, you would feel that coming down. Yeah. Right? This guy is an interesting story. As soon as you talk to Michigan's defensive coaches, they all want to talk about this guy. He came to school without a scholarship. He walked on. He battled for a year as an outside linebacker. He wasn't going to earn a scholarship as an outside linebacker. They put him down in a three-point stance, made a tackle out of him. And here he is starting and starting well. Last year, he was tied for the league 
in the Big Ten in sacks, doing an outstanding job. A former walk-on, now on scholarship. Now Foley, going off under his own power. He's thrown the ball 40 times here today, completed 19 for 245 yards, has to stand out for at least one play, and so we'll get an opportunity to see number 10, Bill Shaughnessy, the junior out of New Jersey. So both the quarterbacks are out of New Jersey. Surely the running back, and he has indeed been the designated runner here today. There he comes oh, again. No chance. At this point, Anderson and the rest of that defense were ready. Boy, no chance. No chance at all. And you almost wonder if a defensive coach calling the signals there saying, well, they won't have the quarterback that hasn't thrown a ball in a ball game come in and throw one in a pressure situation. They'll go ahead and run the ball and call a defense accordingly. Boy, you can see a good penetration up inside, forced him outside, right there. Had a stunt call between the linebacker and defensive tackle. Foley returns. He's out for one play. Third down and seven. Bill Shaughnessy in for only a play. And he's going to stay here on the sidelines and get himself warmed up. From the shotgun, Foley incomplete. Oh. Yes, yes, sir. They've got to call it. But that ball was not catchable. I... Did you see that ball as catchable, Brent? I'd have to see it again. Ritter, I was watching the contact. There was no question. There was contact. Pass the defense. Defense. Spot foul. First down. We'll take a look at it here. Low from behind. Here's the ball. Going to be going to the right side of your screen. He threw that sidearm trying to get it in there. See? And there's definitely contact. And you have to call that pass interference. And that's David Ritter. He is the number one student on the Michigan football team. Last quarter, 3.5 GPA. Smart enough to not make that mistake. It's a first down for Boston College. After the 44. Six and a half minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. Michigan 21. Boston College 13. It has been a struggle for the second-ranked Wolverines. And with the the, the opportunity to, to score and go for two, you tie it up. So they're, you know, all they need is a big play. What is it about the error today in college football? Penn State gets 81 points. California with 79 points now. I didn't see that. California knew. California. All I know is they had scored 79. 79. They're all they run the Houston offense. <laughs> they were playing Pacific. Oh, Pacific. Yeah. 79-17 was that score. Well, they had that fine running back at Cal White. They, they, you know, in fact, his name is being mentioned for some Heisman Trophy recognition. I asked Gary Moore at the meeting last night, I said, Gary, does it, is the second year any easier? And he says, you know, actually, with the expectations in regard to Michigan and the polls and how good we're supposed to be, I, I, I think I feel the pressure a little bit more now than I did last year. First and ten for the Eagles. Good move, good oh, move. Under pressure. Goes down at the 37-yard line. Dwayne Ware. Tony Henderson, the nose guard, used a good quick loop charge he jumped around the center didn't get help from the guard and he was in the quarterback's face before he could even look up real good quickness you'll see him right in the middle of your screen here coming right there here he comes see just he just jumped around the center normally you don't leave your center all by yourself you'll protect him on one side with the guard second down and long Foley to Womack incomplete. I don't think Foley has been the same throwing the ball since he was shaken up. I tell you, <laughs> it is tough to be. That's why you don't see professional quarterbacks running the option because they're in the game to throw and win the football game throwing. And when you get banged around too many times, of course, it was in the pocket, it's tough to be as accurate. They need 16 yards on this third down. They've got to get all the way to the Michigan 46-yard line for a first down. And Foley on the run again. Diving catch on that far side, incomplete. Kubayama, the freshman, the intended receiver, incomplete. That was that de design delayed sprint out again where you, you come straight back, draw the rush upfield, and then head for the sideline. And he threw it right there. Good discipline by the receiver. Had it right there where he needed that first down. Now you see him throw it to the left of your screen. Let's see if he's in. He's got the ball. 
No, he didn't get both feet down. Or he only has to get one. Well, he didn't catch the ball. Oh, he didn't catch it. Okay. okay. Now, that's, there's a penalty that's important, anyway. isn't it? Yeah, there's, a, there's a penalty here. Penalty flag thrown back in the area where it would be holding. Offense no, so decline. Holding. Yeah, you, fourth down. Yeah, you'd appreciate that. So it was that. incomplete pass on the uh, on the far side. They worked on a fake punt on the practice field on Friday. I kind of doubt they would do it right now because they feel the defense can stop them and they can get the ball back. Now I'm told that that picture over on the far side was another football coming down. That he did grab the ball. Great. Kushner. Fair catch by Howard at the 35-yard line. Three touchdowns today for Desmond Howard. Makes a fair catch on that punt. And it will be first down for the Wolverines with five and a half minutes to go. You know, in spending the last couple days here in Boston College campus visiting with the coaches, they were saying they just wish they had something really positive and constructive to talk to their players about and get excited about and show them this is how you have to play type thing. They haven't had many of those experiences yet on the practice field, nor they did have that opportunity against Rutgers. But right now, you'd have to say that there's a lot of positives in what's happened for Boston College today. And the coaches will have a lot of uh, congratulating to do and a lot of patting on the back and saying, hey, we grew up a little bit. Alexander is out for Michigan. This is Powers. They're going to pound away with the running game out to the 39. They've got five and a half minutes leading by eight points. See, they had they, they shifted again to the 46 defense, eight man front. You're running against a lot of defenders when you do that. Here's Alexander. McManus, the standout inside linebacker. Notre Dame a winner next for the Irish Michigan 3:30 next Saturday afternoon here on ABC might be a little shake up in the top five this week even if Michigan does win Penn State and Washington both very impressive today powers on that cut back again for a Michigan first down with that kind of knee action you never have so much weight forward that you can't make the cuts that you have to make to advance the football that time those knees up there pumping not too much weight forward he sees it he just sort of bounces back to the left first down that is five straight games too and we were talking about the top 10 Florida State will stay number one but you wonder about Michigan here this week We've got Miami they play Houston Thursday night Washington beating Sanford today and Penn State with 81 points so it's possible that the battle for the second spot will be closer than it has been. And Powers, what a fine-looking sophomore running back he is, out to the 45-yard line. Boston took a shot at running a blitz and come after him that time. They picked it up on the backside. Here's a nice tight shot. You'll see it handed off. I formation, fullback leading. Leggett goes in and cuts the linebacker down. See, they brought the people on the other side and pushed him in this side. You would like to have that blitz coming right in the face of the run. No question that that offensive line, which averages better than 290 pounds, is wearing down the Boston College defense here. Powers picking his way. It's a first down for Michigan. He's now run for better than 175 yards, and that, of course, five straight games that he's rushed for better than 100 yards. He wound up the season with four consecutive games over 100 yards. This is his best afternoon ever. His, we saw him run his best game last year against Ohio State. Well, he had a big one, too, in the Gator Bowl against yeah. the Mississippi, and now he goes off a little shake it up. At 120 yards that day against the Buckeyes. Tyrone Wheatley replaces him. can motor <laughs> to the 25-yard line. He has that great speed but you know what impressed me on that run is he has a little shake and break as well he's not just a, a sprinter now take a look at this is what i'm talking about see he hits the point of attack quickly he sees it he reads it now see a little shake and break a lot of great sprinters can't make those kind of cuts he runs with a good wide base not close together he's going to be a good one now michigan brings the clock down inside of three minutes with this drive leading it by eight points 21 to 13. 
This one has been a lot tougher than was expected. Wheatley bounces to the short side to the 19-yard line. Really good job by Day Depot to tight end. He just stayed after his block, stayed after his block, and eventually the ball ended up out there. That's why it's so important to be persistent as an offensive a blocker. He's not known as the most physical blocker like some of the guys they've had in the past, but he did a nice job. Who will be favored, Notre Dame or Michigan? How are they, how's Notre Dame doing today? They beat Indiana. They got okay. 49 points. Notre Dame will be today. favored. Notre Dame will be favored. This cannot be considered a real impressive showing, and I don't want to take anything away from Boston, but it's going to hurt Michigan in the polls. Second down. Probably what the Michigan coaching staff wanted. Wheatley. Geez, if they cuts to the 18-yard line. If they ran any misdirection or a quarterback keep that come out the back. There's just nobody. Wait a minute. They got to save something for Lou next week. <laughs> I mean, you don't think Gary Moeller was coming in here with his bag of tricks yeah. open, do you? Yeah, I guess not. But I, I tell you, it's hard to fool Lou Holtz. I think this is perfect for Michigan. I'm, I'm going to take. I think this is exactly what this coaching staff needed. Oh yeah, it's so great. much rather sure. this team this week, getting ready for Notre Dame, oh, yeah. coming off a performance like this, that if they'd have won this thing by 30 points. I agree with you. Looks like they're going to come after him here again. Yeah, the eight-man front. Here they come. On third down, Burback throwing in the teeth of it for Howard, his fourth touchdown of the game. Heisman Trophy candidate are written all over that one. But see, what made that a great throw? Here's the advantage of being a Greerback at six foot five. He has a guy coming right down the barrel, right in his throat, and he goes ahead, strong enough arm to throw the ball without having to finish it. You'll see what I'm talking about here in this high end zone. Just watch the quarterback. All right, now see the rush. Here it comes right in his face there, and he's that big, tall guy. He gets that arm up over the top. Good delivery and good reception by the receiver, Howard. Here it is again. Again, see, you can see him up behind there. He was getting knocked back when he let it go and still threw it right on the money to Desmond Howard. Oh, he's a fine football player. Don't go out on the lamp. <laughs> oh, nice. Right. The scoop there. Well, that's, that's a scoop. He just stole a secret. Yeah, all right. Nobody knew that before I said that. <laughs> he got a couple of 19-yard grabs, an 8-yard, and a kickoff return for 93 yards. Well, <laughs> here he is. And that adding to his record, J.D. Carlson, Michigan record. So it's 28 to 13. I'd still and say I, that Tom Coughlin and the staff really have to be pleased. And listen to what the crowd is saying to that staff and the players. A nice standing ovation here for this effort from Boston College over here on our side of the field. Some of those guys are from Michigan. <laughs> they respect them too. Watching the big offensive line from Michigan operate, Brent Skrepnik playing left tackle this year for the first time rather than right tackle. To me, he is a little more impressive on the right side than the left tackle. Deep to the five-yard line. And Dukes brings it out to the 28-yard line. Final minute of play here. It was a courageous performance by Boston College. They're going to come up short, but they pushed Michigan hard. Again, the interceptions really hurt them, too. They're down and going in to score that first half, and he throws the interception almost in the end zone, and then later they're going down in and have a nice drive, and they throw the interception. He will grow from this experience. I think they will gain confidence from this experience. There's another interception. Intercepted by Dotton at the 40, 35, 30. Dotton's free for the touchdown. The hometown fella takes one in out of Cambridge. Went to the same high school as Ramil Robinson and Patrick Ewing. That's his second interception return for a touchdown in his career. A gifted athlete, as we said earlier. This ball, the receiver fell down. See there, the left of the screen, left the quarterback hanging there. Now he shows good running ability. 
You know, and he was a fine back in high school. They just transfer those learned skills from high school right onto the field right there, and all of a sudden he's running with the ball again. And another extra point. to 13 the scoreboard here shows 33 to 13 and there is Dotton that's all his partners in, in crime look at it there <laughs> there's his friends who come here to watch cheer for him on this successful homecoming what a great thing that is for the young man. The game was not in doubt. He gets yep. a touchdown on, on the return. You know, the funny thing, he has a teammate that is playing for Boston College, and he said during the week he called to talk with Jay Clark. He wasn't there. Jay Clark and he went to the same high school together here in Massachusetts, and, but he talked to his mom and just said hello, let him know I'm coming to town to play, and he's coming to town to play. He went all the way into the end zone playing with that one, didn't he? You know, Michigan opened on the road at Notre Dame last year, and it's only the third time ever that Michigan has opened on the road for two straight years and it also is a milestone as to when they were last in Boston they came here to play Harvard and that was some time ago when they were playing an Ivy League team to go way back to the early part of the century Duke's the return man Now you go back to 1940 and Michigan beat Harvard 26 to nothing. So they like coming into the Bay State. <laughs> Eat lobsters. <laughs> it didn't like the car. Quite as tough as this was supposed to be. <laughs> no. Gary Muller has to be pleased. They sort of bounced back here in the second half, but he, he said he really wanted to find out his, if his football team was as good as the papers are telling them they are. <laughs> yeah. Well, they it's can't a, be too sure right no, now. No, no, you no. Know? There's going to be some question marks. They're going to have a battle on their heads yeah. next Saturday. You bet with the Irish coming in. Incomplete. Seconds continue to tick down. Got to be happy for these young men. They can really hold their heads up this week. Well, I think uh, I think they'll start buying the effort program, the practice tempo a little bit more, the philosophy, because it's totally a different philosophy from the past program. Not that Jack McNeil's program wasn't a good one. It was a fine program, just a different philosophy of working. And I think the coaches actually felt the players were, you know, All right. wondering, hey, does this work? Coach will give them 10 minutes to enjoy this and then say Georgia Tech is here in seven days. <laughs> oh, gosh. Thank you. Green. Womack. Oh. Hounded out of bounds on that far side. You know that Lloyd Carr, the defensive coordinator, told uh, John Spagnuolo and myself last night the number one thing they want to do is improve the tackling. There have been some real hits out there. I mean, smacks by that defensive secondary. That one early in the ball game by Corwin Brown, you don't see any better at any time. <laughs> Well, Elvis will be sighted in Ann Arbor next week. <laughs> you think Glanville will leave some tickets for him? <laughs> you know what the problem was here today? They didn't have their own cheerleaders. That's, That's right. right. Rent a cheerleader can cause you a lot of problems. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, you, yeah it definitely affects the point spread. I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's the young girls from Newton High School right here in the neighborhood. Had to be a big thrill for them, 10 of them. The veterans were invited to come on over here and lead the cheers. The toughest assignment of the week was learning the words to the victors. Yeah. I don't know the words to the victors myself. You will next week. Yeah, yeah. I guarantee it. <laughs> Best fight song in college football. <laughs> At least this oh, yeah. the South no, Bend. We'll be yeah, right yeah. back. We invested 100... Well, because of time constraints, we're coming up on the top of the hour at 7 o'clock Eastern. We're going to be unable to show you the thrifty 
car rental postgame show. We apologize for that. We hope we've kept you up to date with all the scores flashed across the screen here in the second half. And we want to remind you that along with Michigan Notre Dame next week, Bo Schimbeckler comes to ABC next Saturday afternoon. Foley to Mark Chamura. He's a Polish lad who's got a great future as a tight end in the National Football League. Fine student here at Boston College, also the long snapper this afternoon, and he's he's the workhorse. He'll set the record. He'll be the all-time receiving leader. And there it is in the fourth quarter, 79 to 17. Utah over Oregon State. You know, I saw Pacific film last year, and they played University of Arizona and played them well. They look like a good football team. Georgia with a big win. Uh, they've got a fine young receiver by the name of Hastings. And I think he had a good day. Nebraska with 59 points. 42 to 7. Washington beats Stanford. So there's a team that some folks think could win the national championship. Yeah. I wonder, by the way, if Dan Deardorff wants his vote back. I don't know. He crowned him a little early, didn't he? <laughs> I tried to get the the offensive line coach Jerry Hanlon has been here for 23 years to give me a little insight into Deardorff and coaching him enough so we could need him a little bit today but he wouldn't do it he wouldn't do it he's Jerry Hanlon wouldn't do it he's always a Deardorff fan. yeah <laughs> well, he didn't have to say anything bad <laughs> final seconds tick off Miller catches the pass thrown by Foley and Michigan survives this one was a lot closer than that score would indicate 35 13 and we'll wrap it up in just a moment